Welcome to the EST Hangout. This is the EST Hangout, and today's guests are... Two of the greatest words in sports opening day. This is the EST Hango presented by White Claw. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot of baseball today. Uh, joining us, Jeff Cashel returns, Crust Performance. Uh, and we've got Jake Lanferman, who is the head coach of the Edmonton Riverhawks, getting set for his second season. Both joining me, Matt Awanek, live right here on the Hango. Uh, what a great day today. Is uh, nice? Two of the greatest words Aren't in all of sport. Opening day and play ball. Like, that's oh, why I just play think of play ball. One. I just can't wait to play ball. That's Love it. it. I'm keep, excited. I always say play ball after an anthem. I don't yeah. even have to, an Oilers game. I'll sit there once it's done. I just yell play ball. <laughs> yeah, <'cause laughs> it's one of those it's the best. Yeah, Let's get going here. Yeah, it's one of those things. The snow it's isn't a, inviting, but we're getting there. It's yeah, coming, right? Yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah, it's a sign for everybody up north here. It's a sign that, you know, good things are to come for sure. Summer's on its way. Yeah. It is. Uh, today, perfect excuse, though, to stay home. You I betcha. just watched some baseball because I don't even know what time the first game is. It's usually like 10 or something like that. Oh, yeah. Come what do we've got this. here? Uh, my New York Yankees start at 210. <laughs> so I've got lots of time to get ready for the Yanks. Uh, you guys are both Jays fans, <laughs> like most of our listeners are. Uh, uh, 105, first pitch today. I thought they'd usually start a little bit earlier than that. Who's opening day for the Yanks? Uh, mm-hmm. We get the Astros. Oh, oh, big one. In Houston. No Garrett Cole for a bit, though. Eh? No, no. And uh, Aaron Judge had uh, an MRI a couple weeks ago on his abdomen. So starting off great. <laughs> starting off really great. The studs but are going. We'll see how it all goes. Um, yeah, that's the story in baseball right now. If there's which a, one? If it's the injury, the yeah. injury story. And we don't need to spend too much time on that today. But it's an important conversation. We've got a great show that we just uh, put out uh, last night. And we have Dr. Fleissig, Glenn Fleissig on, who is the Research director for the American Sport Medicine Institute with Dr. Andrews and all the great orthopedic surgeons in Major League Baseball. But, you know, for years, baseball has been trying to tackle the injury problem in sport. And we've narrowed it down to a couple of things, but the data that's that's out there now showing us what's going on to curb this issue in sport, we've got a long, long way to go. But you're seeing it in opening day rosters yeah. on virtually every team. Like last year, if you think about it, there was uh, 900, and this number is going to be close, might not be exact, but but 900 and almost $940 million spent on players who couldn't play. In 2022, there was $840, $843 million spent on players that could not play. That's at the major league level, right? Mm-hmm. So one of, the, one of the big pushes at the professional level of the game is trying to solve this this injury mystery that's going on and you know we probably could sitting here figure a lot of things out today what's your initial <laughs> yeah. thing of why there's so many injuries well i too think much you no know, much play i think it's layered yeah the the i think the, yeah Throw, you, pitchers are throwing harder than they ever have right so we get ucl a lot the acl feels like they're like knees a lot lately too but Pitchers, I mean, yeah, that's kind of the tough one. You're out for an entire year if you're tearing your UCL. Yeah, there's a bunch of factors here, right? That velocity is yeah. probably one of the big ones. If you look at the the fastball, the average fastball in Major League Baseball last year was 93.3 miles an hour. So if you go back even three or four years, it's up almost two miles an hour. Jeez. And that's greatly yeah. because of the number of guys who are throwing 100 miles an hour, right? But then also you, you have the load thing. Pitchers are pitching less now yeah. because you have all these specialized pitchers now. And, you know, you, you have starters that are going maybe, maybe, maybe the openers, the, yeah. the openers. Like in, it, and again, limits, we're not yeah. sure if this pitching less yeah. is causing more problems than it's solving. Right. In terms of durability and recovery and repeatability. So we're 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 now statistically and because of the analytics changing how we're addressing pitching and yeah. managing pitching. And I don't know if it's really the better, but then if you look at every player that signs, this is going to be a great conversation with you today, Jake. Like you're on the cusp of those players getting to that next yeah. level, the collegiate <clears throat> level and their draft levels. And for the guys that maybe that weren't drafted who are still yeah. wanting to get there, right? Those, the damage is already typically done 
before those athletes ever pro. sign their pro contracts, right? Yeah. So if we're really going to make a big push in changing the ebb and flow of the injuries in, in the game of baseball, probably every sport, we got to start attacking youth development as well. It just has to happen. So that's my two cents on it. I could talk all day about it <laughs> when we start getting into the numbers. But if, here's, here's what I'll say to every – if you're a parent listening or a coach or a player listening – the number one thing you can do to improve your value as a player and to give yourself the biggest opportunity, simply stay healthy. Yeah. Manage yourself, right? Yep. Find a way to do it. No more Nolan Ryans. That's that's the thing of the past. Throwing yeah. 150 outings twice a week, three three times. Roy Halladay having how many complete games in single Crazy. seasons? Oh, see, and this is awesome. But you yeah. miss that. You miss seeing those horses that just, you know what you're going to get out of them, at least yeah. seven, eight, right? Yeah. But the, yeah. the ones that you see go seven, eight, yeah. it was always just like, well, and then right to the closer, yeah. game over. Yeah methodical surgical it was just amazing yeah. to watch yeah and and i love that i like that game way better than the game we're seeing right now i i love the strategic i like actually like the strategy of of using your pitchers strategically but listen to me there was nothing like a roy holiday getting onto the mound on his start day and everybody knowing that okay man this is going to be awesome yeah you're right strap in it's not a one in india the bullpen's probably excited yeah. we're gonna have a little bit of an off day today yeah well the, bull, the bullpen guys would be actually edgy on a day like that right oh, they? because they're going hey man if i need to jump in if something goes wrong and i we need to jump we got to be ready to take to, game, yeah. to take the reins from holiday right yeah. just so it was it's so awesome but the way we prepared those guys and the stuff we did with roy like i was with him in the minor leagues right up through the start of his big league career and just the approach was just so epically different than it is today in terms of like the overall development of the players these guys were cardiovascular ticket, yeah. animals i'm not talking like marathon guys but we spent a ton of time we built them from the ground up from the inside out but we paid a lot of attention to the cardio their ability to recover between pitches between yeah. between innings and between games right um but when we when we look at like when we look at guys like like holiday for example i'm not sure he would have been as successful as he in in, in today's environment as he was back then we had a great coach back then uh with the, with the blue jays rick langford google him he has the most complete games i think in major league baseball he's at the record for the most complete games i can't remember what the number is but just talking with him um and his approach to the game way way back in the day really interesting talking to these guys and i think having guys like rick langford around really lent itself to guys like hankin and clemens and carpenter and halliday the guys of the blue jays that i was exposed to what position did you play i was an outfielder but right. i actually went to college as a two-way so i did both i pitched and played oh, outfield. Really? yeah so a little bit of both and then kind of yeah weaned that way what was your big pitch uh, curveball 12-6 i threw a lot of them i only threw probably 85 86 but i i a lot of that, a lot of hammers, just filling it up. That, that must have it. felt really good when you get a guy swinging on a curve. Oh, yeah, because I've been on the other side of it quite a bit. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's never fun when you swing through one, but the See, other way is a lot better. I always <laughs> felt that would work well for a player, though, right? That's why I love that. The two-way? Yeah, Otani? the two-way. Well, I love the Otani. <laughs> I like the Otani thing. I really, really do, and I wish there was more of it. Yeah. But, like, you coming up, I mean, you got to think that being a, a a hitter that also pitches and being a pitcher that also hits, yeah. that, got to, that has to help you on both sides, right? I think that the mental strategy of it, approach-wise, yeah, you get to a little bit of hey what is he gonna throw here or how can i approach this pitcher versus not so much yeah no it's definitely it's the same thing they say with catchers right if you're always catching you're calling pitches you're always sequencing pitches so they, they think you got a little bit of a more advantage of pitch guessing i guess because hey i just call so many at bats so many games that you get a little bit more insight i guess so yeah it's interesting yeah makes sense yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you guys have a pitch count or anything? There's no pitch count. Nothing? nothing like that. So kind of what he was speaking on, when we get these guys from big Division One schools all over North America, a lot of it is inning, innings limits to these yeah. pitchers. So like if I get a guy from University of San Diego, it'll be, hey, you get him for 30 innings, however you want to use that over the course of the summer. Okay. Not, not every single guy, obviously, but a lot of them are on those. And it's exactly what he's saying. We're trying to – they want to limit. Obviously, they want to have these guys have an amazing experience, come to Edmonton, play in front of a lot of people high level baseball but at the same time they want them going back to usd healthy they want them to basically get their innings but not overdo it so that's exactly that magic number threshold of what he's kind of speaking on jeff is so um and i think that's the biggest thing is like if they didn't throw 30 40 50 innings for their university team then hey now now those reins are a little now we got 40 or we got 45 but it's always kind of that sweet spot where we're not really pushing these guys to, to 50 or 60 in a 54 game summer 
over a short period of time. Are you big into analytics? I'm or not huge, you but I, like when he was speaking on that, it, the first thing that came up to me was like just pulling out Blake Snell in that one situation where every that just goes viral, right? We are so an, analytically engaged now in in what are the matchups, well, you could what go are Jays. the splits. Hey, with Barrios though, oh, yeah, you can go to that situation. It's yeah. crazy. Like he was pitching one. so well. Well, then and the numbers say yes. take him out. Yes. Well, that's it. But. but as a young manager, and I feel like I'm learning that as well, but it's just like, you know the ebbs and flows of baseball. You've been around it long enough. So in a situation like that, and you got a guy in a big game who's just absolutely carving, like, what are we doing taking him? In my mind, what are you doing taking him out? There's going to be a time we're going to have to, but I don't know. Yeah, a little bit too early. Unless there's opinion. a medical issue, sure, right? A serious 100%. medical issue. That, why would you? Yeah. Like, there's an art to the game, right? And I think you mentioned that that ebb and flow. Yeah. That, that, that I, I don't I don't know if we're losing that feel, like, holistically in the game. I mean, there's still, look, in Major League Baseball, there's great baseball people. The collegiate level, there's some great organizations, great coaches. The biggest change in the baseball landscape for me this last little while that I'm actually really excited about, and I'm glad you're here today, Jake, because... Because I think you're that that where you're at in the game is the most exciting, maybe real transition in the game. Because when when Major League Baseball restricted the number of minor league teams a few years ago, right? Yeah, COVID, so yeah. teams that you know, like the Blue Jays, some years would have seven minor league teams. They're restricted to four and a certain number of players under their belt. And then, of course, you, then you have the Dominican academies, which is still a bit of the Wild West. They can have a oh, lot yeah. of players down there. Um, but now we've got a developmental model. It changed the game a lot. Some good, some bad, I think. But what it did do and when you look at what happened all these minor league teams got shut down uh they started putting together these independent leagues and these yeah. summer college leagues and i thought initially this was going to be a disaster and then the dust settled and i think just for me personally i started seeing the light going what a massive opportunity for yeah. organizations uh so with summer college ball organizations or some of the minor league teams that are now uh, have an opportunity to become a developmental step for these players, yeah, right? Yeah. And I often thought, and I wanted to get your opinion on this, I often thought that for the teams and organizations out there that understood this is a huge opportunity to become a sought-after destination for players who are looking to really develop their career yeah. and go a little step farther, what an opportunity. Do you think that's the case? I'm still... I'm still not sure, but I think I see that, that that that's the case. Yeah, and I think the summer collegiate league experience versus independent ball is is a little bit different, but I think you're correct, and that's but these guys play their university teams probably 40, 50 games. If you're transitioning to pro ball, you're playing a, a heavier schedule for a longer period of time. So we'll get guys like position players, like the opposite almost of what I just said about players or pitchers. We want them to play every single day in the summer or a two on, one off kind of situation to almost get them ready prep for that lifestyle prep for playing uh, not necessarily 162 games straight but hey it is a crazy workload and it's not it's not like hockey it's not like basketball it's not go 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 the entire time but to get your body to just be able to handle that we were talking about earlier it, it is a lot to just ride it out and be that consistent piece of hey i'm playing in 150 mlb games in a season we don't see that as much and i mean load management and in, in the broad spectrum of all these sports is growing but um no i, I do think it's just that critical component of allowing these guys to compete at that high level the west coast league which we play in is probably a top three or four summer collegiate in my mind there's the cape cod and there's the northwoods yep. and then there's us right there so and there, there's they're all the same level so it's, it's really not differentiating that much whoever you see on a friday night for if we go to bellingham versus where you're playing in the cape it's very similar you're getting big name guys all over north america and some guys stay home in certain leagues because they're from there they want to spend time with their families in the summer and whatnot but I think you, you spoke on that yeah, perfectly. It, it is that critical component before you transition into pro baseball. Yeah, and for these young guys to learn how to manage themselves, right, yeah. over the year, you see. And I think, you know, you look at the Japanese players that come over. I think we, we've talked about it on this show before, is they typically don't have extended success. Most of the guys that come over wind up getting hurt, and that's historically the case. They It's not that they don't perform well. They just, whether it's this the volume of work or the change of workload, right? Because, you know, in Japan, they're notoriously known for massive, massive amounts of workload in terms of batting yeah. practice oh, yeah. and bullpen. Yeah, it's crazy. So now they're coming here and they're strategically doing less. Is that too much of a change for them, yeah. right? It works the other way as well for a young player coming into an organization. And that's why I think baseball is so special just in, in terms of how the organizations are set up. I love minor league baseball. Yeah. And I love the opportunity that it provides for players to really grow into themselves, into the game. But now with these shortened 
um, rosters, you know, four minor league teams per club with a certain number of players. We don't get to see those players who are going to hang around for six or seven years yeah. before they break through. And then we're also seeing a lack of veteran leadership because the guys who were hanging around for years, they're not there anymore because yeah. there's no place for them. So now these young guys coming up don't have those veteran guys in the clubhouse in the minor leagues. So there's a bunch of changes. I think the dust is still settling, at least for me, to see how it all pans out. But talking to the guys in the organization Organizations, they seem to like it better. I wasn't sure if if the organization guys, the, the player development guys, were going to like this, yeah. but they're saying they get more time with each player now, which makes total sense. And Fair that well, that changes the entire draft perspective too, right? From forty rounds Certainly. now, we cut it in half, and yeah. uh, that's the exact same thing. So that's why there's all these independent leagues have a lot more opportunities. You have twenty rounds of guys not going to play pro ball in these seven. thousand players, basically. It's crazy. Yeah. So it just cut cut it in half almost, and then now you have your top level talent going right into transition into pro ball. But then all these other guys that are extremely talented, where yeah, that's it. Dust settles. Where are they going? Yeah. Independent leagues and and these other kind of leagues that have kind of come up, which yeah. is yeah. And I can't wait till guys start coming out of those leagues you know those late developers the guys that would be in a minor league system for five six years and then finally boom they're big league that's, material finally because some guys take that long right uh that's going to be now happening in oh, yeah. independent ball and maybe collegiate ball like in football and basketball collegiate baseball now yeah. has a whole new meaning in the pathway i i think well, those stories growing. those stories are so galvanizing too like what cole bello right no oh my gosh he plays six years of indie ball or something crazy like that and then to make it to the blue jays organization right. play on the pro like those are those are cool like you spent your time doing a lot of road trips a lot of <laughs> gritty baseball to get there so that's always cool to gritty see. baseball that's, that's a good it. way to that's put it. it we will get into <laughs> baseball like major league talk and preview that but let's first Go with the Riverhawks still. Yeah. Yesterday, yeah. you guys announced your roster. Oh yeah, uh, eleven returning players. I think it was. Yep. Um, how uh, let's just, how is it recruiting players to come to Edmonton play for the Riverhawks? Well, let's say to put it this way: with our field, our fan base, everything we have, it's not as difficult as it seems. But that entire process is it's uh, it's busy to say the least. So in the entire fall, um, I got named the head coach two years or two years ago in October, and I was almost like the last dog of the bowl in October to get all these Division One guys already which blew my mind because it was a month after the season ended right so this last season we finished our last game first week of august i was already recruiting for this summer the week after in august Jeez. so i mean that's kind of how crazy it is so um prepared to say the least we got a really strong team a lot of guys that are coming back we have yeah 11 returners i think and close to 28 newcomers but um it's a fun process it's fun because you don't necessarily i see a lot of statistics i see a lot watch a lot of video talk to these coaches and you're doing all that piece of it but until you come see them in the flesh and they come here then you really get to know like wow like what you got and and the level that these guys are kind of performing at so it's exciting when we all do get together on report day in the 28th of may but um yeah it's been a process it's 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 countless hours but it's worth it at the end who are some of the returning players? Um, so the big ones we have, um, we had KJ Ward, but he actually, I think he suffered a UCL injury. He was our, our fr flamethrower last year, but hes I don't think he's ended up coming back. Um, we got Tommy Takeyoshi, who is, uh, he was electric to have. The fans loved him. He was, he was good stuff. A couple pitchers, so from our University of Alberta program, the Edmonton Collegiate Hawks, we have Halen Knoll coming back. He was actually I the w, WCL Pitcher of the Year, which is an uh, incredible feat for him. Matthew Ridsdale, um, Evan o over Mars, Jacob Potter, and Ack. So a lot of just really key pieces that uh, th at the end of the day, we want good baseball players, but all those guys I just mentioned are just awesome human beings. So having them in the clubhouse is just, it's really fun. So, so yeah. what's the goal when you go into a season? Like, is it development? Is it winning? How do you balance the two? It's like a perfect mix in between, I guess, is the best way to say. We, I, I don't know. I'm a competitive individual. Yeah. I, our whole staff is our organization, ran by Randy Gregg. That kind of those kind of individuals. We want to win. Um, Stanley would, Cup I, champion. Yeah, he, that's, he's got that's the exactly you know? it, right. <laughs> so I would almost say the development is the more important piece of it, but um, it just speaks on the staff and the ability of us to allow these guys to mesh to win games. It is tricky. You report on the 28th. You get four or five days of practice 
practices before we're off to Bellingham to play game one. So it, it's uh, the first couple of weeks is a lot of feeling out phase. But as soon as we're in there, if we can make the if we can send these guys back to these Division One programs, better baseball players, more knowledgeable, that's the end goal. But I think at the end of the day, yeah, we want to win. We want to play playoff games in front of five, six, seven thousand at, at Remax. So it's uh, yeah that kind of perfect in between i think five would be low for playoffs yeah no you're right I, always, we, I, like, honestly, we, honestly, it, I think you'd so. it's five to seven i think in the last few yeah. home no, stands right. of awesome. last year it so is. Like it's grown so like i think if also we're talking playoffs in august i think we'd be able to make it work a to little. get seven eight yeah. you know yeah. for those maybe upwards of ten for well for canada one of those is games. always a spectacle and I, when i'm recruiting it's, with these guys i let them know like you're getting 9500 you're selling it out basically which is madness unless you're playing minor league baseball yeah. at a very good following organization like the, the experience they, they get in that situation is crazy. Well, these guys, th there's not a lot of opportunities they're going to have to be able to play in front of four or 5,000. Seriously, like even that number alone, like I look back and like that's, yeah, I played for the prospects in Canada is probably 9,800 is, and that's a lot of, you might not ever see that in minor league if you're playing like yeah. the lower ranks for yep. an A or, yeah. So it is cool to see that. I don't know, it just speaks on the city, right? Like growing up here in Sherwood Park, the city just loves sports. And it's just always been that way, which is kind of, it's it's proud moment for me. It's it's awesome to see it all kind of tie together and be able to, yeah, it's fun when I see my like nephews and my family up in the stands going crazy for it. So it's awesome. Yeah, me and Mooner always talk about the recruiting part of it, though. And like in hockey, it's, yeah. you always make the, well, it's cold, it's winter. Edmonton would be a great recruiting destination for college in, in kids the from the States. Oh, because yeah. Beautiful summer, lights out, it's great. Yeah. Maybe the manager doesn't want to talk about this, but <laughs> drinking age is only 18. Yeah, there you go. They're from yeah, Americans yeah, yeah, yeah. 21, yeah, yeah. you know, down south. So coming up here, it's That's exactly it. So it'd be like, oh, Canada. It'd be yeah. so much easier, I would think. Like, yeah, this is the place to party, and you got to play in front of a bunch of people. Yeah. Yeah, and I would think, Jake, too, and this is one thing I wanted to talk to you about because I kind of find this with um, some of the organizations that we work with, like our in, our MLB International Academies, right? Yeah. We start building relationships with, with uh, some of the schools or some of the teams, yeah. and they know that, hey, man, if a player's coming from there, they're probably pretty well taken care of. So have you found, you're into year three, have you found that some of those relationships are starting to form? Yeah, like 100%. That's, that's important, and, and right? That's on, so that's the biggest thing is, like, on day one when I'm doing that recruiting, I go to my three schools that we've had for three, like, they'll send me three quality guys for three years. So, yeah. like, Sacramento State, University of San Diego is our big one, um, and then a couple other programs where it's, like, I know what I'm going to get, and the that's the only thing, too, right? It's, like, as much as the coach wants to send you quality not that there's necessarily like you're fibbing about a player's abilities but if you want to send a guy somewhere you're going to talk him up but like when then they get here and they want it's like it's not what i expected this guy and um it could be a situation where we're sending guys home or we're cutting guys and and that's kind of what a lot of these teams in this league they over recruit so that injuries and these kind of things that happen we know that we still have quality players to yeah. get us through the summer yeah. like arms especially like i've over that was our biggest thing so last year you're looking in the bullpen and you're like damn like a couple guys can't throw today because the schedule is so hectic so now we're slimming down our bullpen to what we can bring out of it. And that was my like main recruiting. It's easier to find position players in that sense than like quality arms locally and in North America from these these programs that can give us quality innings and compete. Yeah. Compete you, is the you, biggest thing. You guys are in a good place when when schools want their players to go there, 100%. right? That is one yeah. of the big, that's kind of what I get excited about in the college scene, right? Because yeah. if you guys run a good program, because there's some programs that, well, aren't that good out there, right? Yeah. Oh, and, 100%. And, and you don't want to send your players off into the wilderness. Yeah. So you, there's a place you know yeah. where they're going to get treated well, but also they're probably going to come back better baseball players that's important yeah well and that yeah i think that's a major component of it is building trust with these coaches that hey you're going to take care of my sure. boys you're going to make sure they get better on the baseball side of it and they're not they're going to stay out of trouble as much as they can and then that's exactly it and i think this year too we built off my alma mater at university of british columbia so we got about six guys coming from there and that's in my mind the best baseball program for that level in all of canada and what they produce is just it's awesome yeah. year to year so we we got guys coming from there, which we're really excited about. Too. Yeah. Hey, can we talk about that for a second? So I've got a chance to work with Baseball Canada, too, quite a bit. And I don't think people, I don't know if Canadians, Canadians should just be proud. Canadians yeah. should be proud just because of sport. Because if you look internationally, what Canada does in just in terms of sport, it's pretty special. Once you get. This is a golden generation. We were talking about this with Paul Sir earlier this week. In, in, with where athletes are in Canada. Yeah. Not just hockey. Across a bunch of sports and the high level that we are at, yeah, this Paul's, is a golden generation. Paul Sir is such man. Oh man, like 
I, I know, but I really appreciate Paul because he's he's one of the guys that that he's one of the guys. If you think about it, if you go back and listen to his stories, you know, from from when he was on the station or coming in here, he's one of those movers and shakers that help have helped form this new landscape in the game of basketball. Right? He's one of those those guys that really did it, and you need those people for sure. But Canada has really done a great job. What people don't understand out there in general is Canada is a powerhouse in collegiate and elite professional baseball and producing players per capita. Yeah, per if capita, you look at per sure. capita, how many players Canada actually produced to the big leagues, to yeah. minor league ball or to college, especially it's uncanny. Here's what I can tell you. I am familiar with almost every major league club and I know every club has eyes that are laser focused on Canada all the time because they love our players, the yeah. attitude, the grittiness, but also because of what we're experiencing right now, in case anybody hasn't looked outside, it's a blizzard. It's winter time and opening day. Um, but that winter time has really helped develop our players into something special because they're not outside playing all year round. They can't, yeah. right? So they get away from playing the game and they work either on their 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 skills, the technical, hitting, pitching, yeah. the technical, tactical side, or the physical side to prepare for that. Or they're playing other sports, yeah. which a lot of other uh, regions where baseball is popular, they play year round. That's it, right? right? And so Canada's in a real special place right now, and and you know I'm excited about this. But you, there's a couple like Alberta now. If you look at yeah. your guys's program, Medicine Hat, Greg down there is doing a great job. The yeah. guys at Sylvan Lake now. You got the Okotoks dogs. Alberta's turning into this baseball mecca now, yeah. man. That I never dreamed of as a kid. Yeah, speak on, yeah, I played for Sylvan that one summer too, yeah. and just it's incredible like how it's grown and a smaller community like that, not necessarily Edmonton, but selling out fifteen hundred to two thousand a night in like <laughs> Sylvan Lake, Alberta. You're like, wow, this is it's pretty cool to see. And exactly what you're saying, like population wise, it's wild what we pump out to MLB organizations compared to, to what is it, two hundred thirty million plus or whatever yep. in the United, United States, right? So, um, yeah, no, yeah, it speaks on the level of talent and and I guess I think too is just that you're seeing a cycling and resurgence of um, local guys coming back to give back to these communities, which is probably the most key thing. Quality coaching at those younger levels where they're like critical for development. And we've always had that in hockey, obviously. There's been a million unreal hockey players coming out of it, but you see these smaller towns. Now you have these uh, guys with pro experience come back and then they just feed it back in the community. And it's just a cycle of producing excellence. Really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Biggest thing you learned from last year as a head coach? Biggest thing. Year. Um, I didn't get ejected at all, which is good. I got in. Oh, I got, no I, got, I, I, I tried to get into one uh, on the road, but no. So I mean, level-headed, very level-headed. I can't say the same about this year. We'll see. Um, but no, I think managing player expectations and just. Um, sitting down and being extremely personal with every guy i think even with our college program i try to do that to that level every day but um i think there's something to it you probably see the best coaches in the mlb and those organizations too it's going on you're putting your hand on that guy's shoulder every day and saying how are we feeling today like what's going on outside of baseball those kind of things are almost to me the most critical like these guys are they can be from texas they can be from california you can be halfway across the world playing up here in edmonton which is amazing but at the same time hey how are you doing do you miss your family do you how How's your girlfriend? These kind of things where um, it is so much baseball related, but at the end of the day, it's like, hey, if we can just make these guys have a good summer, have fun, and uh, performance obviously, obviously usually comes with that comfort, I think. So I think that part of managing it, like, I, it was really easy as a hitting coach. There's not as much pressure in that first year, but the last two years, it's been uh, a lot of fun kind of trying to, yeah, play those edges. So season begins again, because on the road, Bellingham. Yeah, Bellingham to Ridgefield. So we got a six game, six games on the road to start. I think it's the first, I believe. I should look at that once more. It's coming. Um, and then beginning June. Yeah, there you go. And then ten games at home. I think we just have three big home stands this summer, which is it's good and bad. But I think the fans are gonna love it. You oh, want it's, it? it's great. Yeah. Oh, it's awesome. it's a lot of fun. It, last year was great having a couple games going to April or uh, August, not April, yeah, yeah, August. Yeah. We have but more this year. Yeah, they but. stretched it out a little bit because that all started break. So I think yes. we go all the way to August 10th or right, right nice. around there. Yeah. And hopefully some playoff ball. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what but we're the for. one concern I would have then, because Mooners is the one telling me about this, is that if you guys get playoffs, though, you, you might lose players. Oh, yeah. 
And that's when it's just the wild west. Because now you have guys all these different report days to go back to college. So, yeah, your number four stick first baseman could be going back to Dallas Baptist or whatever in August State, and that's just tip the cap. You don't really it get is a what choice. It is. <laughs> so now I'm trying to find some guy who can can handle it at first. So, but it's it's not just our like it's every team in has playoff, to go through. Which is the only thing that I would say with the league is I wish it was not condensed necessarily, but if we even it was that first like August first to fifth was the actual playoffs. Now you're getting your your top talent showcased in the playoffs, which not necessarily exactly what we're saying. And August 10th is you're losing some guys, so you could be the best team all year. All of a sudden, though, get that's gutted honestly how it is. In yes, the playoffs, how it and all of a sudden you lose. And I mean, like Corvallis is obviously an annual. They're just a powerhouse in this league because they have that direct tie to OSU. So they get three or four guys that they're going to OSU anyways, right down the road. So they're going to stay there until the entire. Um, I think mm, they've won the right. league. They've won the league seven years in a row now. Yeah. Or something. it's a madness. So that's our main competition. And Bellingham's good. Victoria is always good. The Canadian teams are usually really good, which is fun. It's fun to watch. But it is a great time. Get down to Remax Field this year if you haven't been. And for those that have been, I don't have to tell you to get down there because <laughs> you're going to be going down there. Uh, it's a great time. Did you get there this past summer? Yeah, a couple yeah, times. Yeah. It was great. My, you know, it, it just was awesome to sit back and I tell you, I went with my nephew and my brother-in-law. The number of kids out. I oh, think yeah. that's the one thing that yeah. really, I mean, the game was good. Like yeah. the, the talent on the field, I was actually quite surprised. I, yeah. I don't know what I expected, but I was quite surprised because it, it was my first game. Yeah. And uh, the, the one thing that just overwhelmed me was the amount of kids in the stands oh. and running around having a blast. That impacts the game, man. Yeah. Like, you know, that was one of the most, uh, maybe maybe the, my best takeaway. Oh, they get to run on the field. They get to run on the oh, field, yeah. but even, but then there's stuff to do around the ballpark oh, too. Yeah. The new ownership group. Hats off to you guys, and I know Randy a little bit, and some of those people. But but they really have a feel for what that experience should look like. They've been a, doing a great job. Oh, oh, awesome man, job. come and, on. And get, he's he's so quality at yeah. what he does. It's awesome. And yeah, just speaking, like we had we had a school day <laughs> that first week where it was like a one o'clock game, and every school like a field trip came down, and then it, we tailored it with mascot day, so all of mascots i don't think i've ever heard that place get that loud before when these mascots <laughs> walked out there's just like five thousand kids screaming it love it funniest madness, thing about that day <laughs> was we were at 1260 supposed to be there that day yeah me low tide and jameson and that was the day we got let go Oh yes, we correct. were coming down I, we i had I, all, we were i wasn't going into work that day got a call day. in the morning going yeah we need you to come to the office and uh, i was like oh, okay we're getting let go today i can't go to the river hawk so <laughs> Uh, we were so close to doing our show live from the game. Yeah, that, that was the big lead. We wanted yeah. to. You guys were yeah, talking all week. It's going to be great because yeah. Low Tide and Jameson were just sitting there talking baseball oh, for four hours. And I was what's going so fired on. up for that, I was man. just going to be – I just chose to go there just to be the runner, <laughs> but I was there to watch baseball. Yeah. Let's be real. And, yeah. <laughs> so I'll always remember that one game. Uh, <laughs> dang. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. Maybe this year we could get there for that one. There you go. Uh, Jake Lamferman, uh, he's the head coach of the Edmonton Riverhawks. Jeff Cashel, Cruff, Crush Performance, friend of EST. You can catch it uh, Wednesday, 7 o'clock, right here on Edmonton Sports Talk. Let's get into the majors. Toronto Blue Jays. I'll start with Eric's question they had yesterday. Are they making the playoffs this year? Blue Jays? <laughs> Who wants to take that one first? Uh, okay, listen. I, I, there's the extended wild cards. Right. You know, there's I think a lot more wild, options I think, than 10 years I think ago. With the, look, their pitching is really good, right? Mm -hmm. If their players are healthy, they're going to have, I think, pretty good offense. They've got a really good shot here. The problem is, look at the landscape right now. And you guys are probably, you guys, as in the Yankees, <laughs> are probably the the wild card here. I was going to say we're a wild card. Yeah. yeah. that's you guys. We probably could are. be World Series champs. Or we can miss the playoffs. Right. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> that's how, then that's how crazy it is. Yeah. But that upsets the entire apple cart. So I am going to predict you guys are going to be fairly successful this year. Thank you. And Makes simply, me because, <laughs> simply because you have to be. Because what is this, year 16 of mediocre, non-postseason? Well, we haven't won since 09. Right. And I use we very much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 09 is a really long time. It is a it's, long time. Uh, for, for Yankee, like Jays fans, they'll be like what is that yankees fans oh nine is an eternity like yeah. it's yeah it's too long yeah and you've got a couple of key things going on a couple of key injuries at the start here yeah. hopefully cool. you guys don't get in too deep of a hole mm -hmm. which will put you back for the whole season because you know you get behind early it can oh yeah it can or it can motivate you so the mets from last year yeah. the mets spent like, all this money and right off the bat they got poor and yeah 
it oh, went away. Yeah. That, that Soto pickup, though, is going to be massive. He's one of the best young players in all of that's, MLB. And that's the wild card. That was a big card. one. And that's, he gives so much protection to Judge. Like, that first four hitters of that lineup is just going to be scary. Yeah. And now Stan's hitting, like, seventh or eighth. Like, you have, it's just wild, the depth that they have, right? Yeah. And that's it. It's but wild. they've always had hitting, the Yankees. Yes, correct. It's the pitching. Yeah. That's well, if the Cole's thing. Out for a, like that could be a big. And day. who knows how good he's going to be when he comes back? If Cy like Young, if they're going to rush him yeah. back or something. Is Marcus Stroman going to be a guy that could play like he did last Stroman. year, like the first yeah. part of last year? <laughs> yeah. They wanted Yamamoto. Well, not a good first outing yeah. for the Dodgers, but like they needed pitching, and that's. I think he'll get comfortable hit. Yamamoto. I'm yeah. more like concerned about with the Jays positionally defensively and what kind of holes we're filling so we lose chapman are we going turner every day at third is biggio just doing the same thing where he's going everywhere um you trade espinal which sucks he was an awesome player yes. I, I loved him defensively yeah I, I, I know we're always looking for relief pitchers but that was a this is a tough one to swallow a little and bit. so that has to be the move there so when that yeah. happened i'm going okay look you get a great minor leaguer but what is, what it, is this a now? is this a, a a cap thing or is this a money thing? Yeah, no, no cap money. No, I, no, I wouldn't think not so. Like, not at that point. point. Not at, like, so at that why, point in why the make season. that move though? I don't like, know. That one actually it, it, was it baffles kinda, me a little bit, right? Do they need the arm? That's what I'm the thinking. Injuries, right? yeah, maybe, but is is I'm trying. I don't know about this kid. I didn't know about this kid before. I mean, he's in his second year. It, yeah. There's there's no way he's ready for major league no. baseball. Like there's no chance. And so you, you lose, yeah, you lose a guy in the clubhouse who just seems like an unreal yes. person, like just a really good guy, like with Espinal. Yeah, so, so I can't tough. help but think again. My conspiracy mind starts going. Is there something more? Did he want out? Yeah. I can't see that at that clubhouse. That's a good group of guys. Yeah. I can't see too many players wanting to leave that yeah. world, especially the way the team's going now and the investment they've made. Like, oh, yeah. oh my goodness, the Jays. They've really, really taken a step towards you know really taking a charge with their investment i mean the, for, the, yeah. the 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 roger center is now redone again it's an actual baseball field for the first time ever yeah. so when they actually start playing there you'll see the dimensions have totally changed it's fantastic yeah. you can go online and see the layouts well you were there during construction yeah just a few i was there which, yeah which was super cool but but just listen the investment they made and this is shapiro comes on right and he has that background with Cleveland. I mean, I remember my first time walking into Cleveland's, <laughs> Cleveland's uh, um, uh, uh, weight room, right? And I'm going, what in the world? What is this? It was like Space Age. They have hyperbaric chambers. They got <laughs> treadmills and steppers. And this is way back in the day, man. This is like early 2000s inside of this airtight barometric chamber where the guys are changing their oxygen levels in their butt. They were really had, they had actually yeah. uh, one of the first teams to actually have a separate room for vision training in sport. They yeah, were so, yeah. so far ahead. Um, uh, it it had, hasn't paid off for them in terms of you know overall team performance, but it really helped. I know individual players master their craft. The investment the Jays have made in player development, though, all you need to do, and everybody here can go online and just you can Google it. You can go check out their that new training facility they have down in Dunedin. No, oh, it's crazy. It, it might be one of the most advanced, complete, spectacular player development centers in any sport anywhere. At this point, it is spectacular. There might be a couple places in Qatar that are pretty special as well that might be uh, on parallel, but they're really making move. I hope they're successful. I can't predict. I have mm. had no success predicting who's going it's to. Best part of a baseball. Yeah, yeah. It, it really is. So who saw Rangers? Yeah. Diamondbacks last year in a World right. Series. Right, the Diamondbacks like, team, and like that's it. You get these young kids who just play well together, and oh, it's just crazy. Carroll and you had our guys that we got rid of. We were talking about that. That's a tough trade. Now that you watch Moreno and um, Guriel just go off in the playoffs yeah. the whole time, yeah, and um, yeah, it's tough. It's yeah. always tough. Yeah, so I'm excited for you in your position, right? Because yeah. I've known a couple of our players now that are now managing teams, and to talk to them and see that they're. The, the shift in their perspective in the game. Huge. It's huge. Like, crazy. You know, they, from being that player and what you Understanding think. Understanding what the manager wants. Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's actually very, very cool. And and so I watch all these teams. But going back to the Mets, right? We have a couple of teams. So what we do on Crush Performance and what I've done over the years is I haven't really necessarily tried to pick a winner, but I've picked teams to watch, right? So way back in the day, the Astros. When the Astros in 2011 got new ownership, I'm going, hmm, something that's interesting is going on here because they, <laughs> the, the, the new owners actually made a public announcement. They are making a direct assault 
at becoming World Series champions. I'm going, whoo, let's see how it goes. <laughs> well, yeah. here, here we are, yeah. right? Cheated their with way. With or without check, the garbage check. cans. <laughs> no, 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 that's right. no, no, for sure. That, but, yeah. but that's, I don't know that's the black eye in the Astros. That's why you... you, you I might like them the, least. Like They're worse than the Yankees after that whole yeah, scandal. Yeah, I'm with you, 100%. Sorry, they, Norman, a combine. I'm a big <laughs> Astros fan they, listener. And he, they, uh, went, they, went, they went from being one of my favorite teams to watch and going, no, please don't let this happen, right? Um, but take the Mets, for example, guys. And this is what's fascinating. The Orioles and the Rays, historically Incredible. the Rays. Just watch the Rays, right? But last year, they are like they are like fourth. I don't know. Somebody can look it up. But they're like fifth and seventh in overall payroll oh, yeah. during the playoffs. The Yankees were 300 million. The Dodgers were 200 and some million. The Mets, however, though, when Cohen took over, I'm going, okay, here's another really exciting team to watch. Just in terms of how are they going to make it work? Um Three, the highest payroll in the history of Major League Baseball, $343 million last year, and they were 20 games back at the All-Star break? Yeah, that's crazy. Like, what? No. Nope. Like, there's seriously something missing. You can't just spend money. But, that, you, you but it's tough. You honestly can in baseball. That's the crazy part about it. You get an injury or, like, perform. It's just, it's not like hockey. You know, you're not going to get the same every single day. You're going to have these slumps. You're going to, maybe your team doesn't, we don't mesh well. We don't win games. Like, maybe on paper, like, exactly, $340 million, but we just can't win right? ball games. And it's the same. you got to, like, oh, it's just bizarre. And then you have the Rays, $76 million. Two of the Dodgers or two of the Yankees, three of the Yankees picture, pitchers earn more than the entire Tampa payroll, right? What was that Tampa final that one time? It was 150 million payroll right. to 40 or something? Yes. A-Rod yeah. was making more than yeah, like the entire like team or something. It's, it's right. astronomical exactly. when you think about that. So I love the Rays. I love the Orioles. And I'm going to love to watch the Dodgers. The Dodgers spent $1.2 billion <laughs> this offseason on free agents and, and signings, right? Well, and are, they're the new Yankee evil empire of baseball for sure. But are they going to be successful? I, I, they I, have to be. I'll say that for them, they have to be. Well, you can't go spend seven hundred million on a ton. You can't go spend all that money on Yamamoto. You can't tell oh, us because it's a failure. I, but it's hard Mets, to say that about baseball. It's hard to say that w World Series or bust because it's very difficult to the win. The Mets had to be, though. But you so did the but, Yankees. But so the Dodgers have the history of having won recently. You got the new P. No, Rose they're... in the league, too, betting on himself. <laughs> you don't know <laughs> what's going to happen. That's going to happen with that. Man, that is insane. Oh, well, the part gosh. of that is, like, how much does that now just impact the locker room? Oh. Did you Talking see about the that? interpreter? Like, he, doesn't even, he wasn't, didn't even graduate from the one of the schools of his bio. It's, it's bad. Yeah. It's fishy. Yeah, well, to say that at least. And you're paying a guy that much money, and that's the first like thing that we're getting out of him. Well, Which for Rob Manfred, this is incredible. an awful way to start a baseball season, oh, right? You're, like, yeah. you're getting set for this if new season. If you're not a Dodgers fan, you're loving it. But exactly what you're saying, there's so much money invested in those guys, and they just keep paying. They signed Will Smith to a contract extension yeah. yesterday. hundred and, and like not small numbers, no. 150 or something over... And they just backload these contracts that are astronomical. <laughs> like Shohei's making two million this year. Yes, four, two, yeah, I think he makes most of his money after oh, his career. Oh, sixty-eight a year after ten. Yeah, that, like it's nuts. And they did that with bets too. They're gonna pay like five hundred million in three or four years to right. those two guys past the eight years from now. This daughter's ownership's selling at some point. No, it's crazy. Years. You have, you <laughs> have to off have to. this team and not tell people about that. <laughs> it's gonna be like that. What is it, Benny Benito? You just paid one Bobby million. Bobby Benito is my day, favorite yeah. story. <laughs> one million a year. Right. Yeah. Yeah. One point three or something. It's gonna be Shohei Day in twenty thirty fifty five or something like that. Well, okay, but listen, man. Like um, uh, Shohei Otani gear swag, it's sold out globally. Oh, it's crazy. They yeah. might have made their money back already. I, think, I, I yeah. don't even know. You like, should be. Yeah, you're like, right. They, they, they're, they, I'm, I'm sure it's, within the next couple of years, they're going to make <clears throat> over a billion dollars just on Otani. International jersey, jersey sales. Yeah. Yes, oh. for well, sure. When the Jays were trying to get Otani. I was I was trying to wonder one why Otani was going to go to the Jays. It's yeah. just that doesn't happen. But for Rogers, it made a lot of sense to ditch hockey, go all in on Otani. Yeah. Not to build baseball in Canada. But to try to get the Rogers telecommunications all into over. Japan. That makes right. sense, yeah. And it was like, if you have Otani, can you get into there? And all the money that comes with it. Like, the Otani deal was That's bigger biggest, than baseball. Biggest Way free agent bigger. signing we'll probably see to like in all four core yeah. sports. Well, I can't wait till we get the billion dollar deal. Like, well, that, like, we're getting there. Oh, we're getting there, right? It's like, coming. It's, it's, give it a discrepancy from the where... NHL to the MLB, like, astronomical. It is. Connor from all sports. is making, like, oh, man. Connor's at 12.5. Did I have that right? And that's, no, like, four. show his Monday now. Just, yeah. <laughs> like, like, what's like, he making here? Yeah. Yeah. Why do I have... Yeah, yeah McDavid's 12.5 right. yeah, or 12, something. 12.75, yeah. maybe? Something right like around that. There, yeah. So, yeah, it's... But you get, like, the LeBron is... Is he 60? 
He's over 50. Yeah, but you got your eighth yeah. guy coming off the bench in MLB or an NBA team making more than Connor McDavid, a generational yeah. player who's just outstanding. And oh, it's, it's right. crazy. Left handed yeah. relief pitcher. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they're, they're, they're easy. That's to what point. you're looking for. That's what they, everybody they, wants. I, well, that's what I say. If you ever pitcher. have a kid, get yeah. them to be a left left handed relief right pitcher. Arm behind their back. They could go to a throne. Exactly. <laughs> get them pitching until their 40s yeah. in the majors. Teach them a knuckleball early. Yeah, Only have go. to go pitch every couple of days. Yeah. And they're making 15, 20 mil a year because teams want the hell out of those players. Yeah. Just that's the way you develop those players. But the Dodgers, but like, they have to win. They or have it's a failure of a season. They, no, no, no. They have to win. But and this, I don't know and this that. Is why I've seen that in so, baseball. Yeah, right. But it's going to be so fun to watch. Can they do it? Like, we're just watching. Look, they're probably, I think, oh, man. outside of the Rays, maybe you can go back to the historical run of the of the Braves, right? I think 14 post consecutive postseason appearances. I think the Dodgers are heading into, a, a, they have 11 under their belt, I believe. Maybe we should check that number. But I think it's 11 consecutive years the Dodgers have been in the postseason. Yeah. And so they've got something special going on. We know organizationally in terms of player development and, and acquisition of talent, they do something right. But you are you guys are right. They have to they have to at least get to the World Series this year. But the thing you have with this playoff format is you have these wild card teams that get hot. Yep. They win a series and they go guns blazing into a, against a team that hasn't played in four, five, six days Diamond and then guys. in baseball yeah that's it and if you're on a heater man <laughs> like it's tough and that's like to go off that it wasn't even Shohei it wasn't even those guys you you picked up Teoscar Hernandez you picked up um what's his name Glass now who's like these pit like huge right. contracts are guys that are your seventh eighth ninth best player they just didn't stop spending <laughs> no every day it was like a new contract extension that was it's crazy 11 straight seasons for the dollar it's, it's 11, 11 yeah I just so, it up so, there, so i think if they get there this year that's going to be there they will they're going to be in the playoffs for sure well they better uh, be yeah, they yeah. Better be, right? we're not just talking oh, about winning rosters they make yeah. the playoffs yeah but again this is, be, i actually kind of want to see that <laughs> right. i want to see the reaction to the dodgers missing a playoffs yeah. and see what yeah. happened and, and for fans who are who maybe not fans of baseball you like if you're if you're not a fan of baseball, you have to watch you have to watch this stuff just in terms of sport, right? Just in terms of sport. Like I'm not a big fan of the NBA, but I watched I got my teams to watch and my players to watch. Like, you know, I've been watching the Pelicans with with Zion Williamson to see because when they came in, when they drafted him first, is here is the savior of our franchise. And it's just it just ha- yeah, right. And but it just hasn't worked out. He was injury plagued early on. He's now starting to come into himself, which has been for me really fun to watch yeah. how it comes together, but also watch all these failures as well, like the Mets. Like when 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 Cohen took over the Mets said, oh, there's a team I would love to go work for. Yeah. Like I, if I was going to get back into pro baseball, that's where I'd want to be because he's got a dream. He's he's part of the old not whole yeah. as a kid gang as a kid used to go as a kid, and he's a true true fan of the team. You want to help that that guy help that team be successful. And then they spent 340 some 343 I think was the number the largest payroll, and they were terrible. By the All Star break, yeah. they were out of it. Yeah. And I'm going, how? What happened internally? Like, it's fascinating to me. But you need a strategy to spend the money still, though. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the thing. Like, with the Red Sox, they perfected the money ball yeah. because they followed the analytics. Right. But they also then had the money to spend. Yeah. The Athletics and Billy Bean never had the money to spend. Theo found both and he made it work. Right. Yeah. You have to have a strategy when you're spending money, not just. Or the biggest names, money, money, boom, money. Boom, boom. Or they still go. don't have a shortstop. That's the craziest thing about all this is that they've spent that much money and they have no. Mookie Betts is playing shortstop in spring tra- in spring training, <laughs> right. which is crazy. Like you got rid of Turner, you lost Seager, and now, yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. You spent yeah. a billion dollars and there's nobody who's like an actual shortstop. No, for sure, <laughs> for sure. But you know, if Epstein, just you mentioned Epstein. I love watch, Theo Epstein. Watch I hate him. Theo Epstein, but yeah, I love you, him. You love to hate him, right? Because he's a right. It was Red Sox. He, yeah. They won, but yeah. he's but, brilliant. But, but watching him at work, though, bring it together, it's kind of like watching Alex Anthopoulos. So Alex was a young he's, assistant GM in the Blue Jays when I was oh, there. Yeah. Watch him. Take over and then grow, develop, and just be this. Now the Bra- the Braves Atlanta, are my. Well, we'll get yeah. to that, but the Braves are special, man, and he is a big, big, big part of that for sure. But you watch Theo and how he took the Red Sox after so many years, just being a marginal. T- t- to put them over the and then go taking that to, the, to Cubs. the Cubs. Mm-hmm. That was the big one yeah. for me. Okay, this is real. That's crazy. Right? 
Like, like I mean, I've always felt if I was an expansion team, baseball's talking about expansion stuff. I'm throwing as much money as I can at the Webb's team Amen. to take over that team. Yes. If I'm starting from scratch, I'm going to here. What, what does it take, Theo? <laughs> you you won with the Red Sox. You won with the Cubbies. Start a team from scratch. Be yeah. to Go see do it. Him. Yeah. If when you're when Vancouver gets a baseball team, that's oh, what that Vancouver. Because yeah. oh, it's so much closer for us. To, like I would love the Expos. No. But for us to get on a plane to fly to Vancouver and go watch a weekend series, that would be a wicked. Let's yeah, go. Let's then you go get Vancouver. Head, you Somebody just get the money. right down to Seattle and watch yeah. the Jays. T-Mobile. Right? That park is a, yeah. oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, it is beautiful. I love that park. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, Alex Manoa. Mm. Alex Manoa. The Alex. mystery. The yeah. mystery man. Right. How big a factor is that though for the Jays? Huge. Of what they're going to do this year? No, it's what huge. is Alec Manoa? It's huge. No pressure on Alec. You got to keep the pressure off him. But but what pressure an anomaly! He should be so good though. Right? I, I just, you like the way he showed up to spring training looking like that. Yeah. Like you know a guy's dedicated in the off season when you he's lost I don't know twenty thirty pounds whatever it is he looks way better in phys- physically. But yeah, I mean it's, it'll be interesting to see if he can get back to it's just the rookie season that he had and trying to come back to that is it's a lot. A lot of pressure on that first year, and that you've seen that more often. You know, they call it the sophomore slump. Yeah, the sophomore <laughs> slump, right? We uh, well, who would be in, Bellinger, uh, massive Bellinger. one. But hey, do you guys remember Eric Kinski? Oh yeah. yes. So Eric Kinski comes to the Blue Jays. This great young phenom has that unbelievable rookie year, right? Yeah. Was he rookie of the year? I Maybe? think so. I was yeah. saying, like, he, he, he was he was bombs rookie of, and all he was that. rookie of the year, and then the same thing <laughs> yeah. happened. And I don't I don't know what it is. It's, there is a there is an interesting study, man. There's a lot of the, the analysts that you don't have a lot on a hitter that comes like straight into the show it's a lot with pitchers too right so like with Manoa if you don't have a lot of like analytics of what we're throwing and in counts and these scouting reports basically to go over in pre um, pre game uh, meetings and whatnot then I think that's like a major a major part of it and then you have all this data and you're and you have a, a plan of attack in the sophomore year a lot of the time and you're hyper fixated because they had such a good year right. we don't want to fail again facing this guy so you almost it's yeah because uh, like talking a couple of buddies in the minor league system there's so much importance placed on those meetings pregame and you have these guys that are yeah unreal arms but hey if we can kind of we're selecting selective in the zone and we're going to leave fastballs high because this slider plays off low so now you're just giving yourself a better chance right yeah. so i think analytically speaking those rookies you just don't uh, well it's the same with the guys that come over from japan and and overseas too like it's different league it's different everything's crazy when it comes to that I, yeah they I just it's just to have that big of a fall off, like going into oh, year yeah. two. Oh, for, no. Like it was that like I get the sophomore slump, but mm-hmm. but, but it's there's it's like that playoff series the year before it killed him. Yeah, yeah. crushed him mentally. And that's and what I was just going to say. It that. wasn't necessarily a physical thing because I don't think he was injured. No, maybe banged up a little, maybe a little tired, but. But there was more. There was more to it than just the physical side, right? There was a, a certainly a mental aspect there, and that's different for every player. And that stuff is real, right? So yeah. I'm praying for the guy, man. I hope he has a fantastic season, and I hope he tears it up. I really, really do. I really do because he's. It's there. We've seen it. It's yeah. not. It's not the, the the talent and the skill isn't there. He's just got to somehow figure out how to put it together. And he's got some great people there too. You know, Pete Walker is a fantastic oh, yeah. pitching coach. Like, so he's in good hands. It'd be nice to see him put it together. It really would for him, oh, for yeah. him as a player. But then, then, then the Jays, oh, and the organization like, after that, that like, sure. good spot is kind of hoping in the wind right now. Yeah. What type of swing is that if he gets back to being Alec Manoa? Right, that's a what Changes 12, whole 15, rotation. 15 wins season though too. Like yeah. a nice little swing from yeah. him going out there, counting on a few more victories yeah. and stuff, not having those losses. Yeah, um, and it's, it's, the AL East once again, it's just going to be very tough. It's and it's still just wild to say, though, that the AL East is tough, not because of the Yankees and the Red Sox at the top. It's because of yeah. Baltimore. 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 And the Rays. And the Rays. Are, man, Baltimore. Baltimore is unreal yes. to watch right now. If yeah. you're just getting into baseball, that's a team you want to watch. Without question. You man. got Gunnar Henderson. You got Adley Rushman. You got, man, Matt Holliday's son's top number one prospect in all of baseball. He's going to come up this year. It's crazy. Matt Holiday stuns the number one. Jackson prospect. Holiday, this kid is legit no way and he is a stud but oh, i feel yeah. a little old with that one you know <laughs> no kidding I know, right? Matt Holliday's no kidding. kid being a top yeah. prospect oh man but jeez but, but hey look at baltimore though over the last let's say go back five years oh my what a transformation of an oh. organization 
Nuts. L- right? So they had a whole bunch of ships in the front office, and then they tried, and they let everybody go again, and then they cleaned out the coaching staff, and then <laughs> these guys came in. I'm sure their heads were spinning because it all happened really quick. Yeah. And then these guys started putting together. They started getting some traction, and boom, here they are. They've arrived. What just happened? Yeah. I, that's the kind of thing in sport that I love to watch. And, and in baseball, you could see it sometimes in football. Like in football, our team to watch would be the Cleveland Browns, right? To see just all the turbulence they're going through. But now they're starting to get some traction and come back on. So every sport has these teams. But Baltimore is as fascinating to watch as the freaking Kansas City Royals oh, were in 2013, oh, 2014, goodness. 2015. Yeah. Just something special going on. And yeah. we got to learn from that, man. Yeah. Like, and right? I love that. Like, you talk about those teams. They played small ball so well. And that, and like to see that in like 2010s, to see that was awesome. You're dropping a bunt in like in a sack situation in the World Series. And you're just like, really? Like that's how baseball should be played on that gritty side of yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I'm in trying that, to get that runner over. Yeah, like, such anything an intense you gotta do, right? Like, is so hit and so runs much fun and to watch. Steals. Yeah, but analytics are saying don't do that stuff, yeah. right? So now you're starting to see some reason come back, the ebb and flow come back into the game because we hardlined, man. We went red line analytics, because of Theo. right? For sure, Theo and, went and won with yeah. Money but you also got guys and, with consistent spots in the MLB hitting less than two thirty right. now and hitting thirty home runs like Joey Gallo. You the Gallos <laughs> of the world. You're gonna punch out hundred fifty plus times this year, and you're our everyday first base slash DA. Or you know, yeah. it's it, the game has changed so much in that way. Like guys hitting three hundred, you barely see it now. Yeah. If you're hitting above, like above two fifty, you got cl- guys closer to the Mendoza line than you do closer to two fifty. Yeah, with look power at power numbers. Look at the strikeout totals now too, oh, though, right? But to it's, those guys. Man, holy, you're facing 105 out of the pen, 100 mile an hour splitter. Like, I couldn't imagine. Yeah, yeah. And then the other thing that's really changed, too, like, you know, if you're a young prospect coming up as a position player, bat speed. It's like velocity. Bat speed is the velocity of that side of the game, right? If you don't have bat speed, you're never going to play in the big leagues. You're not. If your exit velocity is in 110 plus, you're going to have to be something really, really special somewhere else in order to get even a look, right? So, you know, when we're start, when our, when our young players are starting to come into themselves and starting to get (laughs) close to to that part of their career, uh, one of the things we make sure they're built for it though, because you can't just start swinging the bat hard and making meaningful contact, but that bat speed part it is a huge shift in how we're preparing the final stages of our players for the rest of their career just like training for velocity with our with yeah. our pitchers but that velocity thing we have to balance so you got these two two special keys velocity for pitching bat speed for hitting kids those are the co- co- but it takes years right and yeah. we're the, one of the big problems we're rushing our kids into that stuff. And again, getting back to the injury side of baseball. Strength training too early. With who, strength training proper. too early with no movement skills, no balance. And this, 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 this quest for velocity early on and quest for bat speed. We're really derailing, derailing a lot of careers, promising careers before they, they've even begun. Did baseball need to uh, put rule changes to stop the shift? I don't know. I... I have a strong opinion on this. Last year was crazy. Like, just that whole, it was a whole new game. But, like, you've also seen, you would never have Acuna steal that many bases in that, in my mind with the new pickoff rules, too. And right. the shift, it's, that changed everything, too. You're almost giving second careers to guys that you're just backloading one side of the infield for. But, Jeff, you give her. Because I like I, the, the, from the the outsider's perspective, to me, I look at the shift and just, just hit it the other way. Right, it, it, the that is shift so much. That, but the how the one easy thing is that? that is so difficult. It, it I know depends. that that's where I would so have to it, go. It's with. not only the thing is, it's not only K. Okay, there, everybody shifted this yeah. way. I want to go the other way. There's no third baseman. The pitcher is not giving you an outside pitch to hit. That's probably the the one of the biggest differentiations about it. Okay, is if you're spotting up outside, now I have to roll my hands or like change my entire swing and approach to try and hit a ball if that's coming in on me. The other way and like some guys can do it really well or drop a bunt or those kind of things which that's fun to watch when the shifts in place right <laughs> like it's crazy but to me now the pitchers attacking you in a different way okay. so people people are saying like okay man there's nobody the on the left side yeah but it's like it's also a 98 mile hour fastball <laughs> it's tough to hit that number one number two now i gotta try and put it somewhere but yeah. It's it. They're professionals for a reason. Some guys do it well. Yeah, they can. So here's what we didn't get a chance to see, Jake. And see if you agree with me on this. Matt, I'm with you. I wish they would have never banned the shift. Let it happen. And then let 
players, let the hitters develop through time. And it's going to take years to be able to do exactly that. Yeah. To be able Spray to take ball. those crappy pitches and put it where it should never go. It should never go. We never got a chance to recalibrate our hitters to do that. I think it's possible. Maybe not to get meaningful power hits because you're right. Yeah. When the shift is on, the pitchers are very strategic with what's coming down the pipeline, right? Because they're not giving you a pitch yeah. to pull down the third baseline. And if they do, that's a mistake. The pro guys capitalize on that mistake, right? If that ball's anywhere to get it. But could we have, over time, if that shift stayed in place, um, gotten our hitters to a point where the bunt starts coming back because, okay, you're going to play shift on me? I will be standing on first, guaranteed, yep. right? That never, we never had a chance for that part of the game to happen. And I kind of feel ripped off about that because <laughs> I wanted to help guys get there. You want, you want to see guys make hundreds of millions of dollars? Yep. Hit away from the shift. No. Oh, you're worth your weight in gold, no. right? But we never got there. That's yeah. my, that's just me. With, that, whether we yeah. whether we could have or not, yeah. I still don't really. It know, would have taken a long time. It's, it's hard. Saying. Like it's so hard. But to have a well, that, is there any, to get what's harder in sport than hitting a baseball? I, well, I, I know something? my stance. I, I, I don't think there is anything there, for there, me there personally. Physically, there, can't be. And the, and the, the people that say that, like, yeah. Otherwise, you've never stepped like stepped in the box seeing anything. <laughs> like even ninety. Like you go step in a box and see ninety, you're like, holy man, zero point five seconds. I blink in less than that, and I have to tell myself that I'm gonna swing a bat, get it on plane, hit a I ball. I know what pitch he's throwing. That too. That's and the, the like, part I find so just much absolutely of it, fascinating. Though, is is like you could kind of the, see. Yeah, hundred percent. But these guys are so good at just being reactionary athletes, and that's like their yeah claim to fame. Yeah. It's like a lot. Like sure, we can like tip pitches if he's showing if if his hands open, it's change it. Like or we could relay sign. Like there's a lot of things we can do to help. But at the end of the day, it, it's like I'm my approach is I'm gonna. Go for fastball, sit off speed if it's a, ba- a mistake pitch, like Jeff was saying. But if not, like, oh, man, even velo that we're seeing now, exactly mm-hmm. what he's saying. Like, like 105 miles an hour. A lot of guys are throwing over 100 miles an hour now. But then used the change to be, of speeds. Yeah, and then the change, change up of, at 84. The, yeah, it's like, what? It's, it's what? It's alarming, like, as a hitter. There's nothing harder in I, sport. It, I don't know is, anybody. Yeah. I like seeing the text line. If anybody has an argument against okay. that, let's hear it because you have a hard time justifying it in this room right now. But listen, so... Can I tell you guys a story? Oh, yeah. My first time ever at big league at big league camp. Can I tell you this? Yeah. Just really quick, just to give you an idea, appreciation of. So, um, 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 the pitcher they had a they had a major league pitcher coming back from a UCL. Eric Hansen was his name. Okay, big tall redhead guy, Clemens, Hankin, Halliday, Carpenter era, right? And Charlie O'Brien was still the catcher with the with the team, and it was his first full bullpen. And it just happened to be my first day down as a guest coach of the Blue Jays camp. I was over at Billy, so I was standing in the bullpen. They had the front office, the GM, assistant GM, pitching coach. Everybody was on the mound, right? And I'm standing behind Charlie because I've never been that close to a major league pitcher letting it go. And so he's on the mound. It's fastball. Pop, pop. And I'm going, whoa, to be that close and see it because it was 93, 94 plus. And then... (laughs) He calls down. Uh, Mel Queen was still the pitching coach. They called down. Hey, can we get somebody to stand in? I'm the only guy down there. <laughs> no way. Oh That's my amazing. gosh! And I got my street clothes on. I said, and we just Brian, need a body. I say, kid, kid, stand in. I'm going. What are you, are you talking me? about? So I walk around the fence, right? And if this is the batter's box, like, okay, I'm <laughs> you're back as here. Far as you can. You're an <laughs> arm's reach. I'm not even in the batter's box. And he's, uh, they were good. He said, get in the box, man. Get in. So I said, pow. Pow, pow, and I'm just going. And honestly, yeah. to, uh, you, what appreciation, right, for the speed? Because these were all out fastballs, and then you get to. I'm going okay. Oh, curveball, yeah. curveball coming down. Listen, this ball. So the ball is coming right, and it's coming right at my head. So I'm like, whoa! And I jump up, my feet are in the air. I freaking land flat on my ass, right? Poof in the dirt. And O'Brien's like, just pop. <laughs> Spot <laughs> he up. Didn't even move. Yeah. And he's going, dude. You- <laughs> and I look up, everybody there, yeah, they're bent over, <laughs> hands on <laughs> knees, howling. And I'm laying on the ground. I'm going, it was coming from my head, man. <laughs> it was coming. Yeah, I'm laying hilarious. in the dirt. Honestly, my feet left the ground. Uh, it was, and O'Brien's like, pop. He goes, what the hell are you doing, man? <laughs> that was my introduction to Major League Baseball. Are you freaking That's kidding awesome. me? Appreciation though, like holy smokes! That's crazy. I think the oh. only thing I could compete, I would throw up against right now, batting, uh, returning a serve in tennis. And a lot of people say that would be difficult because there's that a lot of speed and high. keeping it in. Oh, I would. like that. I think would maybe be like the next 
Those like that. There's the, that's the like category the I'm talking about. coordination you're talking All about, like that. athletic, yeah, athleticism. Be having to be able to actually and get deal with the speed, get to the and also return, return it, it properly, in, in as opposed to sending it right into the stands or something. Like I, I don't think I would even get a racket on it, yeah. let alone be able to just yeah. send it somewhere. But getting it back over the net, like that would maybe be one of those. Okay, the only thing so, I guess so the quick. argument would be, I don't know if you were going there, is like <laughs> it, it's always going to be one serve. <laughs> that's the only sure. thing. But then like, but even the numbers. So if we talk about like Shohei, I think last year when he did his like miraculous season, I think he faced like 356 different pitchers and hit 40 some home runs off of right. And you go back it's to these ridiculous. Babe Ruth numbers. He's like he, Babe Ruth saw 45 pitchers or something, right? And it's just the ability to consistently hit. That's it. Like every single day, you're seeing a different arsenal, right? Different and that, movements. That goes back to and a point. Everyone pitches a different way. Right. There's no singular like the break, style the, the of pitching. The break, everything about it, right? Yeah. And go, on, on that note, on that, you just made me think of this. In the first two weeks of last season, um, Major League teams used more pitchers than the entire 1998 season. That's crazy. That's the change in though, the analytics and yeah. the way we're using our pitching and stuff to mess up the hitters. Yeah. So that is a great question. Like, And I'm going to get into the biomechanics of that. I'm going to break that down. Uh, returning a tennis serve versus hitting a fastball. We know, you know... 60 feet, 6 inches, 90 miles an hour. It's four hundredths of a second to get the home plate. You have four hundredths of a second to see the ball, identify the pitch, identify whether you're going to swing, start swinging. It takes 150 <laughs> milliseconds to start the bat, to get it to the contact point. So much has to happen so perfectly. I'm going to break down the tennis return because they're serving. Now, what's the top serve in tennis? It's like One, 200 kilometers an hour yeah. or some damn thing, is it not? It's, it's it's up, up there. there. Like, yeah. but then high. you have to actually move to it. But I'm wondering. You got to move a little bit. You got to get the hand on it. But then you also have to return it just over how, that net where it lands. Now I'm not saying I'm not going to sit here and say it's better. It's harder than no, baseball. Yeah. But it, that would be the one would I would my, be my no, comparable. That's, I've never that would be my comparable for sure. But but here's I'm wondering. Sports. The only thing I would say is you got a flat racket. You got a round ball with a round bat. True. And you're trying to hit square. And how much does that <laughs> server telegraph where that ball is going? I've never been in front of a pro <laughs> server, but I know when I'm playing against my buddies, I can read that server like an open book. Yeah. I know because you know where the serve has to go you got a general idea right hmm i think the biggest factor for me is going to be time from contact to the ball to the time it 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 you make contact on the other side if it's it can't be there's no way it's quicker than 400 milliseconds it's not possible for the tennis, I watch, the tennis, tennis. For tennis. For the distance too, I would it's say. It's a different distance Mound for to, sure. Yeah. Yeah. But just, what we, just stuff, what we know just about human... Because we can train human reaction. We can train brain training, decision time, you know, especially if they're focal point. That's part... That's the... When you get a guy physically set, that's what we can do to separate athletes from the rest, right? Yeah. I mean, that's how we make guys real special athletes. The very, very special. Yeah. Visual the, input, understanding, and focusing on the right things. You would love some of the videos that there's, like F1 drivers have insane oh, reactions. Man. It's crazy. Like there was How about a, neck strength of those guys? Right. Oh. Just hauling off on those machines. Like we would just buckle. The and forces. Just, yeah. It's crazy. There was uh, Tyree Kill had to do a. They dropped like a ruler and reflex. You drop and have to grab it. Yeah. Tyree Kill, great athlete, great receiver Unreal, for, yeah. for the Dolphins. He went low and he caught it. And then they did, I can't remember, I think it was Pierre Gasly of F1, and it was like an immediate catch. <laughs> really? <laughs> like just insane, just how much quicker That's they are. That's what I'm talking about, stuff. though. And so that goes back to the idea. Like, so uh, working with Major League Baseball has been pretty cool. They have this, they took over Dodger Town. When Dodgers left Vero Beach, there was a massive hole in the Florida. You know, um, great Arizona's League. better. Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't know about that. Okay. Hey, so so that would be a discussion. I've talked to players who've been in both, and it's mixed. It's almost a 50 50 split, really? whether guys like Florida or well, Arizona. 50% don't right? know what they're talking about. 50%. Well, the guys that like Arizona's Florida awesome. like fishing, the guys that like Arizona like golf. Let's just face it, man. Yeah, like, you know, true. so anyway, either way there though. But um, so in Vero Beach, uh, one of the big initiatives for Major League Baseball is just domestic ball development, right? They know the international game's going well, and that's been fun to be part of that, but uh, they're really focused on that. But they're also focused on the women's side. So they actually hosted a, uh, a, a female women, girls and women's uh, camps down there at Vero Beach. They've done a beautiful job of it's now the um, um, Jackie Robinson Training Center. So it's, it's just a, this cool spot. But they had... Uh, they, they held a, a softball camp, mm-hmm. a, f- a fast pitch. They had some of the ex-USA U- players there. Yeah. Jenny Finch Jenny was there. Jenny Finch, she's awesome. Yes. And so that was my first experience into women's fastball. 
It is insane. Crazy. It's insane how fast and tight that game is. The diamond is so much smaller, that ball. So Jenny Finch, if you guys go back, you can go look at this. It's fantastic. She ESPN hired her to face the greatest hitters in that era in Major League Baseball. Nobody touched the yeah. ball. I think it was uh, Bonds wouldn't do it. Yeah. And I think Alex uh, A-Rod did do it, I think, or they didn't want to do it because they didn't want to be embarrassed or whatever. But she struck everybody out. That's how fine-tuned these yeah. guys are to baseball, though, right? Yeah. And that's just those years Focal of development. Point. And the reps, right? Because if you think how many reps you guys put in, it's, oh yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> but just to, just to master the craft, though, right? Yeah. And, and it just, takes years. That's one thing with these highly skilled sports like baseball and golf would be another one. Years to develop, and that's why you see those athletes are typically a bit older than the team sport athletes, right? Because yeah. it's just at some point it's you and that baseball, and there's no escape. Yeah, and there's just a different dynamic. Like it's a very individual sport, but it's also a team yeah, sport, it's right? Beautiful. It is weird. It's yeah, the only yeah. sport the offense doesn't have the ball to start either, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's a good way of looking at it. Yeah. Uh, Jake Lamferman, he's the head coach of the Edmonton River Rocks. Jeff Grishel, Matt Awanek with you here in the EST Angle, presented by White Claw. Uh, we have a keyword to give away for a trip, so just yes. uh, uh, for those, grab your phone out seven eight zero two eight ninety nine ninety nine. Get set to text this keyword. It's the EST Flyaway, presented by the LVCBA, our partners down in Las Vegas, as well as Fly YAG, the Edmonton International Airport. Nonstop flights to over fifty destinations. Your sports trip starts with nonstop flight from Fly YAG. Visit flyyag.com for more info. Information. The keyword for today is Cirque, as in Cirque du Soleil, C-I-R-Q-U-E, Cirque. Text it to 780-218-9999. You'll go into the draw. YouTube travel. Call someone. We'll talk to you in about five minutes if you're the qualifier on the show. And you'll go into the draw as we give it away April 26th. Two nonstop flights, three nights accommodations, tickets to Cirque du Soleil. Uh, text us, Cirque, 780-218-9999 to get into that draw. Have you been to Vegas before? I have been to Vegas before. Good times there always you yeah. know it always stories that we won't get <laughs> yeah, into is that, that the thing um <laughs> 780 it's the est fly away get that text in right now portions of this hour of the est hangout are brought to you by the hive product marketing promotional products that bring the buzz check them out at the hive product marketing.com for more information um baseball season starting today well Started last week. I still find that so weird. Me too. That mm-hmm. there's preseason going on and like those they games still counted have games. In, yeah in overseas. Too, but right? you're Korea. playing regular season yeah, baseball. Korea. Yeah, yeah. And then they still come back and will play a little bit of preseason. <laughs> like you start your regular season, but you play preseason, and then you go back to the regular. That season. is it a always long makes no sense. way to go for a couple games. Man, oh, yeah. I just I get the marketing business side, and that's what's driving that whole thing. But Sleep man, schedule. that's tough on the players, tough on the staff, tough oh, on the man. teams. Really tough on the teams. Who's the best team in the National League besides the Dodgers? NL. Can the Padres come back? Get figure no. things out. Mm. No. There's too much going on with Tatis and you lose Soto and I don't think they'll be that strong this year. Who else we got? What other teams? You got Giants? I they do like the Giants. Gra- Giants they seem got to a grab lot a lot pickups. of people that like the Dodgers didn't take. They got, but they also spent a, mo- a bunch of money the last yeah. two weeks. Snell, Chapman. Yeah, Snell. They, they yeah, made some yeah. big moves at the end. Cy Young Award winner. So you got them. You got the Diamondbacks. They got that international signing too. That outfielder. I think he's gonna be pretty good. I don't know his name, but I saw that. I don't yeah. know his name either. I don't know much about him. Um, but yeah, yeah, they've made some big moves. I, I don't know why they're always just a little short. They I know. seem they seem to have all the pieces in place. Both has gone. They used to it have could it. Be. I was, I, he brilliant. was a good manager. I yeah. liked him a lot. And that, yeah, and I, I don't know. think it's a surprise that he can go win with the Rangers. He yeah. knows how to win, right? So yeah. no, and and his setup. I mean, you look at Kevin Cash over there. You know, with with the Rays, right? That that, that leadership, that role that yeah. you're in is just so so important. And then to have your staff and everybody humming along and to the, yeah. the, the beat of the same drum, right? Or you know that is a big part of it. So I don't know. I've kind of got the Diamondbacks doing something special again. I'd like to see that. I do like. Yeah, them, I, I, I have it. I get. I got. I, they got talent. That's yeah. for sure. If it's all gonna piece together again like last year, I don't know. But Carroll's wicked. That guy's fun to yes. watch play baseball. Yeah. Holy man. Yeah. With that much speed in the outfield, base stealing, it's sweet. Yeah. There's the Braves. Well, the Braves are my number one pick. I was just gonna say, like, I've got the Braves. I've got the Braves taking it all this year. That's was, my. That's my. I had pick. a question for you. So I tore my ACL playing that long eleven month kind of a year for me, 
How crazy was it for Acuna to tear his ACL and then come back and have the year that he had on like seven, eight months? Right. So here's the crazy. deal. So Ronald Acuna Jr., since he was 17 years old, has been our number one player to watch in Major League Baseball. There's just We just knew something special was happening there, and he is not disappointed no. to watch him come into himself. But that right there is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So, like, I don't know exactly what the situation was with, with the whole injury and what how it went, but it was picture perfect to get back and then to perform the way he has right yeah he just got mixed up jumped to that ball That's in right it. field it on the track it seemed and harmless boom. right it seemed so harmless when you saw it but that was there... exactly kind of what i did too yeah, i picked up it? a ball on the it got right at the wall and then just caught up in turf on mine was turf with metals but that kind of just locked me up yeah and boom but um no yeah insane yeah and then now you have his little brother coming up luis on hell yes. with the he yeah, Rangers, they traded him in that deal for, uh, was it Scherzer? Yeah. I believe so. Yeah, and he's going to be wicked too. Oh, man, Acuna Jr. But yeah, he's unreal. Like every aspect of the game, he yeah. can do it. He's throwing, pulling down 100 from the outfield. He's stealing 60-plus bases. He's hitting 40, 50 home runs. Like it's crazy. So special. That's a special player right there. I can't wait so. to see this year because he's this year he's on the top of the list to make some special things happen again. He's right? the number one rated, I think, in yep. fantasy baseball. Yep. And he's the number one guy. And he dresses the sense. part too, man. That guy oh. swags out holy. <laughs> I don't know. Those chains would weigh me down. I don't even think I could run in the outfield, but no, he's he's awesome. Why Braves yeah. over the Dodgers though then? Pardon me? Why Braves over the Dodgers? Well, did, what do the, they how are they gonna take down that Dodgers team? It has all this money. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's Joey Yotani. Yep. And that's exactly why. I think the Dodgers are going to suffer from multiple stardom. I think there's, I just can't see how that clubhouse is going to come together. Though they've got great coaching there as well. So that's a lot of egos, though. Yeah. There's going to be some egos. But they've had uh, egos for a number of years. Yeah. True. But, but, but I, I don't think they're going to settle in this year to be that team that's going to get it done. I just, I don't, that's my, that's the one thing I'm, when I look at the Dodgers, they should win. And if I were to sit down and go, okay, what would possibly, and this is kind of how I, this is my little process. I go, what would hold them back from being successful this year? Injuries, but every that's every yeah, team. Yeah. So forget about that because that's out of our control. They'll just have to react for that. And they do have the depth, I think, to withstand any major injury. They've got an unbelievable talent pool yeah. right through, right? Yeah. So they're good there. The one thing that I think, when I look at the Dodgers, it's going to hold them back is just bringing all these players now, billion dollars, the biggest, the, the one thing that might save them is Otani setting off some of his some of his salary for the betterment of the team. Yeah. I think that could sit well with a lot of the players, but I think that's going to be the one. Maybe, <laughs> just, and maybe that'll come not together. Not taking a pay cut, just deferring it. Right. <laughs> deferring it. <laughs> I say, I, that wasn't for the betterment of the team. <laughs> right. That was the betterment for him because he, does, has, he doesn't have to pay California taxes in the future. <laughs> well, and it worked both ways, though, but certainly for the the Dodgers, it freed up them to continue yeah. spending to $1.2 billion, which yeah. they would not have been able to do had Otani gone, no, cash no. up front, baby, yeah. right? There's no chance. So the one thing for the Dodgers is just getting all these unbelievable talents humming together, working on cohesion. The Braves already have it. Yeah. They've got they're it, tight man. In group. They're tight and they're so good. And the leadership, come on, the yeah. coaching manager. I like is, Strider. It, He's on there too. It, it, he, uh, is there a better manager in baseball right now? Like, I mean, you could look at Bochy, of course. For sure. Yeah, I think so, right? I yeah. think top three, for sure. So that's why. I think the Braves just got it. They've, But they have a talent pool of depth, and they got Alex at the top running the show. He just, I will say that not having show a pitch is going to be, a, like I think, a deciding factor in that a little bit. Glasnow's good, like, but he's always been injured. He's an unreal arm, but now you're, like, bringing him on, trying to make him an ace kind of. They always they have depth like by all means that's not what they're lacking but yeah. it's it's exactly is everybody gonna mesh is it gonna be cohesion or you got these big horn rams kind of boom how long does Otani do both like and I know this year I know there's the injuries so not doing it this year is there a point where everyone comes together and be like we're gonna do just one well like no? that's where he's almost at though I like think so. with TJ it's like okay what are we we're gonna have to see what he's like how he's throwing and everything I'm not saying that he won't be throwing hard but. I don't know if it, if it, my thing would be if that ever ex like affects our swing directly to where we can hit the, the movement of it with Tommy John, then you're almost picking one or the other, and it's probably going to be the hit. I, I don't know. That's a it's a good question. But yeah, they've they've kind of changed how he hits now, right? So they've gotten rid of that one arm, that one arm release, and that one arm finish. High finish. Because yeah. if you look at that finish when he, the way his bat path goes, if you overlay that with his 
pitching arm is it's the exact and i mean the exact same arm slot just tunneling and so yeah so now they've got him away as soon as he started getting pain they got him away he's swinging he finishes with two so that's gonna yeah. be the, the thing but i mean look at look at joy Votto coming to the coming <laughs> to the blue jays <laughs> that's right? unreal like, who doesn't love that i love i love that guy's it the best man. he is totally he's the best. a nice little <laughs> couple of games too yeah. But yeah no i would i mean he Look, He's a competitor, this is, man. This is going to be exciting as all get up, man, and I hope it goes well. I really do. I saw a thing with Joey Votto talking about aging and becoming a different player, right? And changing his game, changing his, changing his approach to the game uh, because he can't do what he did a few years no. ago. Just a genius. What? A, just so smart, though, right? Still to be an effective big league player without the the same talent or yeah. I shouldn't say the same talent the same skill level or maybe the same execution as he had yeah. as a younger player he's just awesome like that one about he had where he didn't even step out of the box at all that entire <laughs> six straight I was like this guy's the he's the best yes. like, who does this stuff I love it yeah. he's one of our players I hope he makes it I hope he's opening day roster it would be and weird to see him in an odd oh, it will it, be it Reds is. uniform Reds oh, his whole career oh I know for like, sure it's gonna look a little yeah. that place would erupt so. yeah. uh, I'm just gonna quickly speak to our qualifier for the EST of flyaway to Vegas Trev uh, who do we got Jason Jason congratulations uh, you are in the draw have you ever been to Las Vegas before I have, yes. You have? How long ago? Oh, it's been about 15 years, I'd say. Yeah, a lot of people that have been there, it seems like there's been a while since they've gone back. Uh, what would be the number one thing you'd want to do if you got back to Vegas? Oh, well, after hearing your uh, stories of the sphere, I definitely have to check that out. And uh, I know in my youth, I stumbled across a clothing optional pool. Um, <laughs> that was also fun. Well, I, I didn't stumble across that one when I was there, uh, but uh, best of luck if you're the winner in uh, finding that place again, Jason. Uh, keep your phone on April 26th for the grand prize draw. Roger that. Jason is our qualifier for the, EST, right. uh, for the EST flyaway on the hangout. Next chance to qualify coming up during the lock shop. Uh, he wants to go to the sphere. Of that course. Was, I think that's it is yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's beautiful there. That might it's be amazing. the reason to go back to Vegas yeah. now, right? Yeah, that looks crazy. Oh, man. It it's, looks so I want to just watch movies, more movies in there. Like, <laughs> yeah. as we were so there, we, we went, when we went to Vegas, oh, we guys, got to see, oh. and we didn't get to see, like, a uh, musical show, but uh, it was called Postcards, Postcard from Earth, which was, like, kind of like a nature thing and the development of Earth. Um, and the whole time, I was like, I would love to watch Interstellar right now <laughs> in this place. <laughs> All right. Like, Interstellar, that would be, and then Dune, too. Like, I think... It oh, would be, be <laughs> wicked. Just yeah. how it's like this massive IMAX type. So thing. I heard they do like the wind and the sense and all you the, feel it the all. smells the, and the, the seats like move. Yeah, the sound is just cool. perfect. Yeah. Uh, we were in the four hundreds. It's really high up there and steep. <laughs> Dusty and Eric struggled up there. They don't do well with heights. <laughs> I was laughing. They're like holding on to their seats as they're walking. <laughs> um, but I would love to go see like a rock show there. Yeah, like I'm not a YouTube like big YouTube guy. I would have, they would have been great that to would have been seen sweet there. to like, see. Just go anyone there. So no, I do recommend if you're ever in Vegas. Yeah, okay. Next time. Once once the A's are there, go down to watch an A's game oh, yeah. and, and then go to the sphere. Yeah. Because if the A's go there. Yeah, who knows? No, it's, I think it's a done deal. The it's mayor of Vegas even said just stay in Oakland. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they don't even want the A's. <laughs> that's funny I, that is funny and i don't know how this is going to wind up i hope they wind up there but the a's are one of our teams to watch this year too just because in what way <laughs> just to that's see the gonna funny thing about this so um tommy takiyoshi <laughs> plays on the river rocks his yeah. dad is actually the manager of, of reno triple a right oh, Todd yeah, takiyoshi. Okay. Yep. so then is the funny story is every time they send somebody out of reno to oakland he actually says we're sending you down to oakland <laughs> <laughs> Which cracked me up. And that's one. why we're watching because we now we got like a would it be a triple A team maybe? Yeah. Oh, in it, in the big hurting. leagues. So I, they, I this could be a historically terrible season. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's a couple of guys from Barstow I saw yesterday. They're gonna bet against uh the A's minus one and a half every game no. this season to see what happens. Right. Yeah, and that's why we're gonna watch to see how they do. I mean, just as a sport experiment, like how are the A's gonna actually do this year? I hope that franchise turns around and, and does great things, right? I, and that's what you wish for for all, for every yeah. for every but every. But the team. owner doesn't deserve it. The like, owner, that's the thing. Right. Like, no, no, the, the team out of needs all this, like the one guy, <laughs> the guy that no. runs it doesn't deserve yeah, this. Yeah, though he team, doesn't deserve the, anything. The team this. needs to be sold. Like there should be <laughs> honestly, there should be. And again, we're getting somewhere we don't need to go, but there should be a. <laughs> penalty an ownership penalty for fielding 
garbage. I would agree. Well, <laughs> this city might have gone and got close to that penalty for a right. few years. Yeah. <laughs> With the decade of darkness in yeah. the Oilers. <laughs> yeah. That was hurting. That was right? Fun. Yeah. But there's extenuating circumstances. But when it's because of lack of investment or lack of trying, there's got to be some parameters, right? And I think well, there baseball are. baseball has that. It's yeah, like one the, of the worst for that. Yeah, the worst. The, there there are, are guys that aren't spending $340 million. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and there's some teams that they'd like because there's a decent revenue sharing with the teams. Decent. And some of those teams then choose to just pocket that money as opposed to spend yeah. it. And it's when, like, so when the Royals start being good, it's like, oh, look, they're good. Why can't you be good more? Yeah. Right. The Pirates, same, like, it's, you, you could spend a little bit more. Why aren't you doing that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, there's small market teams for sure. And I think that's one of the big conversations still in baseball. Do yeah. they go to a hard cap and a hard basement? I think the Players Association, I mean, they work so well. I mean, it's a, it's a bizarre thing in baseball because you talk to the teams and that, that are smaller market teams without the big payrolls. They love it when these big payroll teams come into town because they're sold out. There's yeah. people flying all over to see the. Yank. Yankees or the, the Red Sox Empire. or the Dodgers, you know. We bring other people money. <laughs> you do. There's no doubt about it. And that's why you see ticket prices go up when one of you guys roll Damn into right. town, which is also criminal to the fans, right? I mean, it's just, it's too bad. I hope the A's, just for the league and for baseball as a whole, there shouldn't be that much separation in yeah. terms of ability in the big leagues. It just, it just shouldn't be there. And that's the conversation. I think I heard you guys talking about it in, in, in the expansion of the NHL. Is there enough true talent out there yeah. to supply two more teams? They, I, want, I three, they want four. Yeah. They right? want four to six like, in the NHL. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, are, It's just madness. There's too, not that many NHL players in. out there. I don't believe The talent is. pool will go, the, the quality of the They're game. They're taking a lot of short-term money. But the talent pool is going to be very diluted. Yeah. But the way Seattle and Vegas came in, that's got to be their, you know, that's their thinking, right? It's like, right. look how strong, look how, but you had blank cap to just go take what you wanted to. And there was so much leverage on every pickup that they made. I feel like Seattle, like, holy, <laughs> even Seattle to be like where they're at. But Vegas, yes. like, oh, yeah, the evil empire hockey. With the there were so many mistakes made by their GMs with oh, the yeah. Vegas expansion draft. Oh, the when's the last time that happened though? Like it had been a while, but they had their pickings on some quality players. Yes. Well, and it's never, it's never been those type of rules for expansion draft. No, right. But if you go to if we expand to two more, it'll be thirty-two teams get a pick from. Yeah. But to get those people quality players, now you're gonna have work? to change the expansion the rules two? a little yeah. less. You don't have to. And it's like yeah. I, I just also, overall there's not enough, I think, to field thirty six teams of twelve forwards. I would agree. Six uh, defensemen, two no, goalies. No, I, I don't think so. I, I don't and then see the how prospects. it's possible. Not yeah. at, at this point in time. Right. Yeah. But I, I think baseball could go to 32 now. Yeah, I think yeah. so. And I think it's one of Manfred's uh, platforms, right? And I think in his State of the Union back There's a in, lot of teams thrown out or to, cities thrown out. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And when he said, like he said, two more teams. But he said with the caveat that the Tampa Bay Rays get their stuff organized, in which they are, there's... The, yeah, they're the moving grounded. along with well, that. Sucks too. It's grounds broken. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they finally pay for a player in that kind of whole deal with it, Franco. It, it, it sucks, right? Yeah. It sucks for that team in the it, franchise. It really does. Like he was paid probably the building block on that entire franchise for the next yep. eight years. <laughs> right. So it's yeah. Yeah, but they're moving forward as it organized with the new stadium, right? Yep. In Saint uh, in Tampa, it's in Tampa. I think this one they're going from Saint or is it in Saint Pete? It's actually in Saint. Actually, I can't remember. But they, they broke <laughs> One the other. I can't remember because it went back and forth, right? The problem was that Tropicana Field's way over in St. Petersburg, yeah. and it was hard to get to across the causeway, and they just wasn't drawing fans. So I think this is one's actually in Tampa. Then the other thing that Manfred had said, this is a few years ago, that they, they got to get the, the A's settled. That ha Before well, the they even A's think about it. has been being discussed since I was a kid, basically. No, yeah. They were, for sure. I think it's been like two decades. But this if there's been. a resolution there, Montreal and Mexico City. Let's go. Mexico City Make it would happen. be electric. <laughs> you brought up Mexico City to Make it happen. And it makes the most sense. Make it happen. You could put three. It's like a New York. It's bigger than New York. You could put oh, three think, major league teams in Mexico City. Isn't Honestly. Like 25 million people or something? Yeah, 20, 22 million you people could sell in Mexico City. 50,000 a game. And they love baseball. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. and if that baseball turns out to be more like the Caribbean League baseball where the fans are crazy, the music blaring, it would be so much fun. It would be so much fun. So, but so there was an article from ESPN a couple of weeks ago talking about the future of baseball cities. Montreal wasn't mentioned once. Yeah, it was Nashville was in there, uh, Vancouver was in there. I can't remember. Like Portland might have been in there. Portland. <laughs> I, 
Portland pickles. I, I, I think it's Nashville. I love. I, I'm so sad they didn't come to town last year. I'm not gonna lie. We went there I, in year one. It was madness. Well, it they also came here year one. You guys gave away a big gallon of pickles, <laughs> which was, was just a brilliant promotion. <laughs> it was. They do it right. They're just crazy over there. Holy yeah. Man. Uh, John Ryan, a part time, a uh, part owner of that team. Yeah. Uh, punter. Right. Uh, formerly of the Elks now. Yeah. Um. But. I think Nashville's kind of like the hot spot. I think that um, is right now. And I'm kind of disappointed because I know the Montreal ownership group had, you know, they're putting up a good... Because isn't Vanderbilt a big baseball oh, program? Yeah. That's yeah. probably one of the biggest D1s, yeah. Vandy. Yeah. 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 Commodores. Very good too, right? Well run. Um, I I would still vote. I would hope that much. But they just can't. I think the political landscape has eliminated them from contention. Well, Serious contention. Montreal's a tough one because it's... They, the city says... We'll build a stadium, but you got to give us a franchise. And baseball says we'll give you a franchise, but you got to build a stadium. It's the double and yeah. it's like who's going to blink first yeah. when they're like, "Okay, hey, we're going to start building," or "Here's your franchise, start building" type thing. Yeah. Go to Vancouver, get it done. It's a lot easier for us in Edmonton. Yeah, Vancouver would be great. <laughs> that would be sweet. Vancouver, but will Vancouver? And you get an immediate rivalry with the Mariners. It's right there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Why didn't the NBA survive in Vancouver, though? Like, you have to uh, think about David these Stern things. David Stern said it was his biggest regret that they didn't stay longer in Vancouver. Really? Yeah. Okay, so and, and I get that, because the city I, should be able to handle... And, and the NBA is looking at Vancouver right now, big I heard that oh, one, yeah. Okay, good. To go back, it, yeah. Yeah. Vegas is the number one for the NBA. Vegas is where they need to get to. LeBron and Fenway Sports Group, they're going to eventually get a team in Vegas. That next franchise, they need to get to Seattle. That'd be the other one. Which, however that works, but Vancouver would be probably right next after. Okay, that. that'd be good. I think that'd be great for sport in general. That's why I like this international flavor, of Mexico, Canada, mixing it up a bit. Well, the thing about baseball, if you get to Mexico City, like it does seem like it could really work. Yeah, a lot of people they love their baseball. Yeah. They would show up, and you get to be the first North American league to say we're North America. Right, that we're is, across yeah. all three countries. Oh, oh yeah, and the games that they played down that there have be been cool. absolutely Animal. incredibly well received. <laughs> right. The crowds, the fans, the the organization, the safety, player safety, the players' association is happy. So I would love to see it. That would be cool. Yeah, that would be cool. A little flavor to it. Yeah, they're passionate. They're passionate down there. Oh man, so much fun. (laughs) That's so much fun. I think I don't know if I think I told you, but I was um, I we had an academy in Mexico, Mm -hmm. uh, Major League Baseball Academy. And there's just so much talent there. Like, it's just so incredible. But we were down there one time. So I was going there for a couple of years, helping them build the infrastructure. And it was the Caribbean World Series. And one of the local teams, the Tomatales, were in the playoffs for the world. So they said, hey, you guys, we, and we were done early one night. And it was a, uh, it was like the third game of the series. They said, we can get tickets to the game. I said, yeah, I'd love to go. Are you kidding me? I've never seen it. I'm going, what is happening yeah. here, man? Not the like, same. The mascots are dancing on the field while the play is going on. The yeah. bat, I was more enamored with the bat boy, bat men, <laughs> than I was with the play <laughs> because they're on the field and they're, and it, he runs and grabs the bat. Everybody cheers every single time. And the music's pumping and people are singing yeah. while the play. It was so much fun. I'm going, oh, how, do, how is this not happening in every ballpark? It was a, party for nine innings man like super fun yeah like just good clean fun they've man. got the soccer culture that, maybe that's it and honestly the maybe that is soccer's like it has these great atmospheres college football has great atmospheres college basketball has great atmospheres north america can't get it to there's other sports though yeah. can't get into professionally just these great atmospheres you go to a hockey game it's a snoozer man I fell asleep. Go to Vegas. Once. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. I'd love to go to Vegas. Yeah, they do a good job. Boston was playing Calgary one time. I went to a game in you Calgary. Fell I fell asleep. In in the start of the third, Wait, third period. Because <laughs> I guess this maybe is like when the Flames not a good hockey team. Yeah, no, I they, they weren't good. And it was I think it was early in the season, but it was boring as I'll get up. That's why I said I'm going to watch university hockey. Because university oh, hockey crazy. So fast and furious, man, right? And it was maybe just early in the season, late. I can't remember. No, it would have been late in the season because it was kind of springtime. But it was a snoozer. You got a lot of people yelling at you probably right now. I know. And then Canada saying, I fell asleep at a hockey game. It, but it was boring, guys. I'm telling you. Like, I when I went to that, when I, that changed my. <laughs> what was the score? It better not have been like 4 4 or something. <laughs> if it was 0 0, I can. I can't respect. remember the score. <laughs> this, I, fell asleep. You were sleeping. I, don't know. I fell asleep. I fell asleep. But it, there was, it was just in. It was boring. It was boring to watch. 
Sorry, I just and no, I'm going, they, they. and I was disappointed. <laughs> I don't know why he's apologizing hey, to hey, me. I was, but well, to, to hockey fans out there, maybe, but no, I think hockey <laughs> fans will relate to because you go there. I was excited because Boston was in town. We're gonna go see a great game, and it was vanilla from the puck drop to the third period, and I fell asleep in my chair. Man. <laughs> this was Saddle Oh yes, that's your issue. There there you go. Go. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's the yeah. It's Calgary. They don't know what they're doing. Yeah, they don't know how to do things right. Yeah. yeah, so much fun though. Like that that game, the, the Mexico game. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh, so great. Uh, so, who's your big you guys sleepers for this year for baseball? <laughs> who's a team you guys think might surprise? Yeah, so I am going to go with the Twins here. Really? I think I think the Twins, and not that maybe that's not even a big surprise, but I think the Twins are going to be the team, the underdog team to watch. Like, I honestly look Texas. Neither Texas nor the Diamondbacks were on our watch Raiders, list last year yeah. they came out of nowhere which was so much fun to watch right so i think i'm going to be watching minnesota twins there's some cool things just going on there i don't know if it's going to pan out but they would be my sleeper team wise i don't know maybe i would go with maybe cincinnati the reds i Ooh. like led la cruz there's some good arms um they're young but more like player wise i'm excited to see corbin burns on the baltimore orioles i think he's gonna have a good year i think that team is gonna have a really good year there's so much talent on that team. The AL East yeah. is going to be madness. Well, AL East, NL West, those are the two like big yep. divisions, I guess, to watch. Yeah, because if we said Dodgers, Giants, and Diamondbacks right there, and the Padres still have players, yeah. we'll see. But and then the AL East, you just take the Red Sox out right now, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the AL East, like it just used to be Yankees, Red Sox, the Jays are fighting for it. Now you yes. have like four legitimate teams, five. It's crazy. Well, the Rays have just yeah. They the Rays do are, are like worthy of a World Series at some point here. Yeah, yeah. agreed. They kind of deserve one for how good they've been for. Was it oh nine or something? Yeah, I think I told you last time. Oh, once yeah. they dropped the devil from their name, yeah. is when they actually got good. You're right. We looked it up. <laughs> yes, really? we That's did. Yeah. First season after they were the <laughs> yeah. they were the Devil Rays. The next year they were the Rays and they got to the World Series and lost. That's to, awesome. Uh, the Phillies that year. I think, well, yeah, that's right. So yeah. they, they dropped the devil and they got good. Yeah. Except they pulled out those Devil Rays jerseys last year a little bit. I didn't see that. They, they they're they're nice. They're I think growing up, I went, when I was 12, we went down there and I saw David Price's start in those jerseys. No way. Oh. And that was when he was like Super. hitting 100 for yeah. like guys back then wasn't that common. And that was really cool. He was an absolute style oh, with man. them starting there. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. He was good stuff. Tigers, Jays. Red Sox, Dodgers? Is that kind of how it went? Mm hmm. That's uh, I think so. And then he just didn't play with the Dodgers. Dodgers. Yeah, the, played, yeah, the COVID. Because COVID, COVID, he didn't yeah. people like it's right. COVID and all, yeah. all of that. But that's. Oh, that was such a big move for the Blue Jays. And it just didn't really work. No. You know? He just weird. wasn't as good of that playoff performer. Bizarre. We yeah. had a lot of guys that were on the back end of their careers those years, though. Like, actually, I really liked the Tulo pickup. Tulo was a sweet addition in the clubhouse, too. But those two years when we were older, Late pickups, Donaldson was a critical part. Oh, those two guys, both of those guys, yeah, right? A lot of experience. Two of those awesome. Yeah. Just class act. Good moves. You can't they, with the Jays, you can't say they haven't tried. Like, no. They've I, always had deadline. Yeah, and they always they always they, push for it. Which there was awesome. only the one year that they didn't, and I remember Bautista got upset. It was well, like the year too. before they went <laughs> off, and he's just like, Yeah, they didn't do anything. Like, is that what are they to show in the locker room here? Um and then after that it was yeah, they just constant moves and well, especially a guy like him, he basically founded everything like you come from town or from pittsburgh and then you just have these career years and you bring you make baseball so much fun what are you 52 home runs at one year yeah Four? i think 54 so. even yeah. yeah right around there and just yeah, like that was fun to watch those were not cheap cheap home runs oh, either. Yeah. even as a yankee fan that a home run against the rangers and that i was i was watching i was at school in kansas i was watching with three guys from texas and it was i don't think i'll ever forget it <laughs> 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 oh, that's still, what it's all still about these right days there. i think I, yeah i still got the one up on those boys yeah <laughs> oh that was good the two canadians it. and three texas boys watching uh, <laughs> it, that was that that actually was one of the best series i think i've ever watched oh, man. In baseball, just how electric and it just was. the and craziest he, stuff happened like that yes. throwback that hit the hand that that run scored and then andrews Bobbled three balls, and it was a crazy series. When could the Jays start doing damage in the playoffs? Are, like, is, if, is, if it's, are, are, are they, is there a window here for the Jays? Are we in that window? Are we getting out of that window? I think they're getting out of that window, which is not fun to say, but I don't know. It's, uh, it's unique. 
It, it also depends what you're doing with Bichette and Vladi here in the next couple of years. I guess Vladi's arbitration doesn't help. Like no, that situation you were just, talking about. Yeah, that. I don't understand that. I don't understand how they let it go that far. It just, I just it, yeah. The, not that it's disrespectful, but it kind of kind of is to that point. Arbitration is never good yeah, though in baseball, right? I've been no. through it a couple of times with guys that you know you work with, and there's always animosity after the fact. Well, what you you go in and explain why this player isn't worth that, what they're that, saying, well, and then like, you have to undercut. Well, they didn't do this, 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 or whatever for like it is. Four or five hundred thousand dollars when they're spending billions. Like yeah. the Brewers blow my mind. You have Corbin Burns coming off of a. a a, like a Cy Young candidate performance, or maybe he was even, and then they took him to arbitration for like two hundred fifty thousand dollars, whatever it was, and he came out to the media just guns a blazing, like he's pissed. Yeah. You're tearing me down of my career and what I give for you guys as your ace, right? For two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and now you're doing the same with like guys like Vladdy. It's wild. Yeah, and 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 where he's at in his career, I I don't understand it. Somebody would have to explain it to me, but I think it was a bad bad move, man, and that. What's that clubhouse look like right now? Yeah. Does that affect the clubhouse? Uh, well, yeah. well, arbitration well, I, I is ugly. It, yeah, I don't. It clubhouse in what way? Like, like towards the the. Well, he's one of your or, leaders. Like, he's a guy that you're kind of you've now made a backbone in your lineup, right? And yep. obviously, you wanted him to transition from his early years to our yeah a leader captaincy, I guess, in that role. So I think that's what you're talking about. It's exactly like, hey, what I'm talking like, about. Like, is he sour? Is he make rubbing guys the wrong way now that he's kind of pissed off? That Time they for me to it. get out of here. Yeah, type stuff. And I'm I've seen go that destroy a clubhouse, guys. Right, saying oh, this, yeah. you know, and that. It's a delicate Especially balance. Especially when you see guys making seven, like you could easily go fetch twenty, thirty million a year on one of those big name teams. Yep. So now he's Maybe. looking at like, hey, do I do that? Do I stay here? I don't know. Maybe the Jays look at making a move this year to try. He's been frustrating though, like in the in. sense of like actually producing. He's yeah. had really like stellar years, but like last year wasn't the best, and that's kind of I guess why they would take him to arbitration to kind of, but. Because what do you have? Twenty six home runs, I think, after a forty four or something yeah. like that, right? It's it is a big drop off, but yeah, it's interesting. Which managers on the hot seat more, Aaron Boone or John Schneider? Ooh, I'm not. Yeah, I don't know. I'm. Not, I've. I, we talked about this. I like Boone. I like the way that he manages guys. There's a ton of respect mm -hmm. from him for those big games and that those kind of situations, but. I don't know. I think Schneider's on the hot seat, to be honest with you, a little bit more that in my mind. Well, they, they, this is their team that's made the change. Mid he yeah. got the job yeah. mid-season to do that. And, yeah. it's, you know, I, both teams, I think there's a lot of surprise. Everyone came back, yeah. you know, from manager to GM, both clubs. Right. And it's the same. So you got, I think both teams needed really good starts to the season. Oh, yeah. Because if they don't, there's going to be a lot more pressure. And the reason Aaron Boone would be, I, I go with maybe a little more Aaron Boone. Yeah. Because Yankee fans could be very oh, tenacious. And they could, <laughs> they, they could will go you all oh, in yeah. if they have to oh, at Yankee man. games. If they start off rough this season, they are going to give it to Aaron Boone and that franchise. And there might just be too much heat at that point where it's like, okay, we got to, we got to go do something. Clip right. somebody. No, yeah. that's a good point. No, it is a good point. And it's real. That's real. Holy cow, the media in both those cities. Oh, Sports media. Imagine. Oh, my God. Toronto's goodness. brutal on both yeah. fronts, NHL and MLB. Yep. Relentless. But, yeah, ruthless. you're like it, it, you're expected to win. You're a New York Yankee. Yep. This is the pinnacle. You of, don't miss the playoffs. No. That's it. Then you're coming off here. You miss the playoffs and finish last Man, in the division some or something. Pickups, though. I think they got Verdu Verdugo, too. Like, they're loaded this year, positionally. But, again, it's one of those teams where I could see them, and some people are picking them, win the World Series. But I could also see already with the injuries to start this yeah. year, it not work at all. What is the Vegas line? Who's, who's number one? Dodgers? No, Dodgers it's are easily they have number to one. Be. Dodgers I'll or say this, Braves? Like, I'll say, it'll be the Dodgers. No, it can't even be close, can it? And I would think it's like it's Dodgers or the field. Which one are you taking? You're obviously taking field because it's Braves. Yeah, I would almost take Dodgers still. I don't mm. think I don't think they'd I don't think they'll do it this year. That's my opinion. I'm with you. I, I would love it. Uh, it's would you though? <laughs> if the Dodgers don't win? Oh no, yes. That's yeah, what I would I'm love yeah. if they don't like, win. No, 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 no. And if like, they win, you just basically buy them baseball. Yeah. Well, that's sucks. the thing, and like, it's just I don't recall going into a baseball season ever thinking that a team just is a predestined champ. 
Well, you can't with baseball. That's the thing, right? And that's and that's where I don't want this to work. Then is because yeah. it looks like they're just predetermined to go win it all. But like we, okay, they make these massive pickups. But like we're acting like the last two years they haven't done the exact same thing. What's their payroll last year? Two sixties, two seventy. Yeah, yeah, it's up there. And you but, grab you grab yeah. Freddie Freeman on top of Mookie Betts on top of like so yeah. like, you know like they, they, <laughs> they overdid it with like we want Shohei and this is a seven hundred million dollar contract. But oh, this is them notorious. Oh, look at that roster, man. <laughs> Dodgers, according to Cool Bet, uh, are the World Series favorite plus 335 okay. Braves are second plus 525 there you go Astros third plus 700 Yankees fourth plus a thousand Rangers plus 1250 uh-huh. and then three teams Orioles Blue Jays Phillies all tied at plus 2000 Mariners twins plus 3000 okay the Phillies the only thing about twins them is Twins with the Mariners, oh, okay. so that'd be one, two, got, three, four, five, go. six, six, seven, eight. Yeah, yeah, tied for like, ninth, best odds. Okay. What about wow. the Phillies? What was I going to say? They're just all at the end. They're getting old together, yeah. that entire team. So we'll see. That's kind of my, like, Harper's getting older. Schwarber's getting older. They're all, I think they're all over 30. They're kind of vet guys, but you got some young talent in there, too. Uh, the Athletics, by the way, 32,500. <laughs> It would be worth a couple dollars, yeah. <laughs> five or a ten. You oh, know, throw, a, a, a ten long bucks future. on the A's tomorrow, man. <laughs> a long future. <laughs> throw a ten bucks down, and it's uh, you're walking with a few grand if they yeah. surprise this year and get those ones. So uh, yeah, if entirely. you're looking to just, I think they call that a sprinkle. Yeah. <laughs> Put a little sprinkle on the Oakland Athletics. So, oh my god. Um, yeah, so funny. the Dodgers still number one, but your okay. Braves are number two. So. Okay. Yeah, so that should say NLCS. And, that, and again, Braves when I went back, I said to my thing, I'm going. That's the reason I would say that the Braves have the edge. I'm, I'm they, surprised the Jays I, are that high. To be I'm honest also, with you, yeah. I didn't see Diamondbacks on there. No, to start. Oh, I didn't mention right? the Diamondbacks, did I? Now I got to quickly pull that one up. It's the funny, Jays, I think, the Jays still like it was a disappointing off season. Yeah. They Their didn't pitching get staff anything. has got to be ranked right up there. But they were good baseball teams. Yeah, still. are going to be um, <clears throat> that new pitcher we picked up. Um, what was his name? I don't even know, to be honest with you. The international signing. Oh, yeah. Um, because he's hopping right into the rotation, uh, right? Yes. Um, I can't remember. But but um, the Jays the Jays starting starters are ranked fairly high, I believe. Oh, in the you league, got Gosman, and you yeah. got um, yeah, they're they need probably the bullpen is probably where they got to shore up a few things if they can. But yeah, they and who, if Manoa takes that comes back that's a exactly little like it. he doesn't have to be what he was that yeah. first season. But you get closer to that. Yeah, that's a huge addition in itself. Yeah. Uh, Diamondbacks plus thirty five hundred. That Ricky twelfth uh, best. 12, okay. Odds. Ricky Tiedemann. That yeah. guy's looks electric. That lefty throwing like I don't know ninety eight ninety nine. I. He should come up as soon as we. Yeah. But they, it, that's the trickiest part, right? You want them at the big league level, but at the same time, they do still need to develop. They're so young, right? Yeah. I think what the Jays also having higher odds is the AL is quite open. I would say. True. Like there, there are good teams. Yeah. The Astros no, good are a good, ba- a yeah. good baseball yep. team. Rangers, but like, but the NL, you're looking at like Dodgers and Bra- it's going to be tough to knock one of those two teams off. Oh. Yeah. To get past them, so for Diamondbacks to do it again or anyone else, yeah. those are the two teams that you're looking up there. In the AL, there's not as top heavy where it's like that's a daunting task. Makes total sense. And the yeah. Orioles yeah, haven't done it yet. Yeah. Um, the Rays, good baseball team, they haven't won the World Series yet. Yeah. So maybe that's one of the things where the odds are coming from. Also, maybe a bunch of Blue Jays fans are throwing money on it to, mm-hmm. yeah. to hope this go. is their Helping year for it. Yeah, but in the odds, that has right. to play a role for sure because yeah. you're right. Great. No, it's going to be a great season, man. I love it's, it. I love this time of year. You got the hockey, NBA coming around. It's a glorious it, time. It, it, that it, one better? month of yeah. just everything. Yeah. Oh, it's spring or fall? Which one's better? Because oh. spring, like now it's nope. like you, you get baseball starts. Masters is right away here for golf fans. Yeah. NHL, NHL NBA play. Playoffs. You got to go sp- I'm going you spring. Get, it's fall, the best time though, of the year. We get the NHL starting, you get the NBA starting, you get baseball playoffs, yeah. which I think the baseball playoffs are the best. Yeah. Over the NHL sports. playoffs. I just love the, the four rounds of just oh, it's just hard nose. Yeah, it's tough to it. get through that. Man. It is hard. Guys like, playing with broken ribs and bro, I don't know. Yeah. You go from the marathon goal. of baseball to the sprint of the playoffs. That's true. It's the the pitch matters so much more. I, I like. will say, like even game one of playoff, just completely different atmosphere. Or game, like when they used to do game like one sixty three. Yes. Holy man, yeah. you play one hundred sixty two <laughs> games to play one game. That's crazy. Yeah. So you're a hockey fan more than baseball. Oh, no, it's even keel. Even I, yeah, it's pretty right there. But uh, I do love hockey, yeah. Okay. But then so in the fall, you get the the oh. NBA, uh, MLB, NFL's playoffs. going. NFL starting college True. football. Yeah. You got CFL going. 
Everything's it's, rolling. It's all happening. You got NCAA it's all kicking happening. off. It's all happening. I, 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 I've always so said always fall. I always said fall is my fall is my favorite time but, for sport. But I love the spring, man. Yeah, I really, I really it's just do. The yeah, whimsicalness in the air. It's the for weather. Baseball. Yeah. You're getting ready yeah, to go too, yeah. coach and stuff. <laughs> yeah. and it's the start of the season. Yeah, so. I can't wait. Yeah, oh. they, it must have been part of the job, coaching a lot more fun than recruiting. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. It's all you never know what you're going to get at the start of the year too. It could be come full. It's not the best year, and then that's the beauty no. of opening day. Though there you go, all Everybody, teams feel like, oh, like they have a great chance. Everybody's and exact You can start same. off one and zero oh and feel really good about there yourself. You go. So, final predictions on where the Toronto Blue Jays finish this season in the AL East, and do they make the playoffs? Um, uh, you go. Yeah, no, I'm gonna say, look, I there are gonna be a contender for a wild card spot. That's what I'll say. I don't so think there's a chance the missing in that. There's a huge okay. chance, a huge chance they miss. I don't think they're solid enough to make a make a massive charge. I think if they do it, some magical things have to come together, which is totally possible. So I'll put them into a wild card, a serious wild card contender. And where do they finish in the East? Are they finishing ahead? So like, I'll say, say they finish ahead of the Red Sox. Yes. Do yes. they finish ahead of either the Orioles, no. the Rays? Yes. Ooh, Yankees. Yeah. I yeah. think they'll finish over the Rays, um, but they won't pass the Orioles or the Yanks. They, I think wow, they have the, the Rays socks. drop into fourth this I year. I don't think they'll be nearly as strong, and they got a lot of stuff going on. But well, plus what you said, the other teams are making charges, mm-hmm. right? So the Rays aren't playing the regular landscape they're playing. It's the Yankees are hot on it. The Jays are on it. But they Baltimore's Rays got something special going on. Lost Glasnow, lost Franco. They're, t- yeah, I don't know. They find players. They though. do, though. They, they, they find players. They're gritty. It's incredible. They really it's, do. It's That's incredible. true. Actually, yeah, they have a couple of top prospects, too, Camonaro and stuff. Yeah, you could be right. It's going to be fun to just it watch is. that It'll whole play out and see how. That's and then maybe the Red Sox do surprise again this year. Yeah. And also, we're talking about the Red Sox being third in the division or something. That's right. story, but yeah, it's been a lot still the Red Sox, tonight. you know? Yeah. yeah. It's still a I've just talk. stopped predicting in baseball. That's there why I go. just get my like teams that. to watch, like my that. players to watch, my storylines to watch. But you've got watch. the Braves. I do have There's the Braves. There's your prediction. No, and I just, just because, yes. Okay, I've made a prediction. Do you have a World Series prediction? Oh, man. If not. Let's, let's run back to Diamondbacks. I don't I mind love that. It. I don't that's mind that. That's a great call. I do think they're a good, they're a good team this year. I also year. want Phoenix. Like, that city deserves some good stuff. Eh? They've won it once with the Diamondbacks, but that's it. The Suns just can't do it. And I would agree. They don't care about the Coyotes. <laughs> Uh, and the cards just they're trash right now. How was yeah. Shane Doan's son playing though? Two goals the other night. Yeah, that was, was electric. Yeah, was that was, that was, was, that that was, was so great. That was cool. I love it. Oilers win tonight. I'm going. All right. So they win. Oh, yeah, yeah, do you ever? Do you know? Do we, like they they win more when you're there. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Okay. So oh, yeah. it's good luck. <laughs> there you go. They've also been winning a lot this year, but hey. Yeah, yeah. They, do they win the Stanley Cup this year? That's a tricky one. I think we've done the most we've done in a long time. I think we're. I like to keep the the Henrique and Carrick ads. Um, it's just gonna come down to goaltending, man. In my mind, is Skinner the guy to take you to a cup with pick behind him? I said that if the Oilers beat the Golden Knights, and it was quoted as this, so I can't go back on it. If they beat the Golden Knights, they will easily win the Stanley Cup. Easily, easily, just that roll through it. Easily Holy at man, that point. Right. So I gotta stick I like with it. that I like one. The confidence. But if they get through the Golden Knights and they get through Aiden Hill, I think they'll be fine. Yeah. Do you want a Kings matchup or a Knights matchup round one? I think if the Oilers want Kings, I do too. Let the Golden Knights actually let the Golden Knights go Lose through up. the Central. <laughs> let them go to the Central. Let yeah. them, and then you, if you if they go through the Central, you yeah. then only have to play either potentially the Avs or the Golden Knights. You don't have to do a potential of both. Who would you rather take between those two? Avs. Golden Oof. Knights. Yeah, I think yeah. Golden. I'm a big Makar fan. Oh, I, yeah. And McKinnon. I love that team. They do a really good job. They like how about Gorgiev just stand on his head against us last time we played him? What about you? For what? Abs or Golden Knights? Who'd you rather play? Something scary about those Golden Knight pickups. Yes. Like I really don't like that team. And they're not at playing all. well right now, but, but but man, and who knows? Like literally, you could get Mark Stone off LTIR at game one, which would be just hurdle. ridiculous hurdle. <laughs> the, I like the Hannafin pickup. Holy man, their defense is good. Aiden Hill. He, he's shown he can go win in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Is he the best Canadian goalie in the NHL? It's Probably. him and Skinner. Sk- yeah. Weirdly enough, I think no, as we're looking to the right. Nation's Cup or whatever the hell they want to call that thing yeah, in yeah. the Olympics, right now it would be probably Hill starter, Skinner's the backup. Pretty good. 
It's just, man, that lack of goalies in the NHL that are Canadian nowadays compared to you just yeah. had Luongo Price every year or those guys. For, uh, oh, two when they won the Olympics. It was Brodeur. Brodeur. Um, Curtis Joseph. Kuja, yeah. And I can't remember who the other one was. And Patty Waugh didn't go. I think Luongo went. Didn't he? Oh, two? Not oh, two. Salt Lake? He would have been, but that would have been before him, I think. You might be right. I'd have to double check because I think it went Cujo to Brodeur. That's not, those aren't bad guys, have they? Yeah. No. <laughs> but and, 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 and Patty Watt yeah. just does not go. But you just right? look at the other teams in the Olympics and like lockdown goalies. You got yeah, like yeah. Vasilevsky, Hellebutt, like big name guys that you know are going to always perform. That's the only thing that yeah. scares me about Skinner sometimes. Uh, Jake, thanks for coming in. Uh, all the best with the Riverhawks season. Uh, 31st of May, you guys are on the road, 7th, you're at home. Um, for that long home stand, um, and hopefully we can have you on at some point again. Talk some Riverhawks, talk some baseball, but also talk some Oilers. You betcha. Thank you so much for having us, uh, Jeff. As always, it's as great always, having yeah. You here. Thanks. Love it. Get ready to watch some a lot of Play baseball. Ball. Let's 162 do it. Play games, ball. Yes. baby. 162 Going games. In. Let's go. It's yeah. the it's the long marathon. Um, do you get to watch a lot of games throughout your amount. season? Yeah, we play yeah. night games, so the day games I'm always watching on the road and at home. Awesome. Oh, yeah. uh, Jake Lamferman, he is the head coach of the Edmonton Riverhawks. Jeff Grishel, Crush Performance, uh, Matt Awanek. Thanks for tuning in to the EST Angle right here on Edmonton Sports Talk on iHeartRadio. Tune in EdmontonSportsTalk.com and on YouTube. Your next chance to qualify for the EST Flyway coming up during the, lex- the lock shop, which is coming up next with the Dusty and Huss. And then at noon, it is the two guys and a goalie with Matt Cassie and Walking Gage, Dustin Nielsen. They'll get you set for Oilers and Kings tonight. And Tommy has the Oil Stream pregame show 5.30 right here on Edmonton Sports Stock. Thanks again for tuning in. Lock shop starting in just a few minutes. Let's go, let's go. There you go, right in front of the camera. First time guest, long time listener, fan of the original draft commissioner. Welcome to the EST Hangout presented by White Claw Hard Seltzer. The difference is clear. Matt Awana, Tom Zola here. Joining us today, 